Rivalry between North Carolina and North Carolina State has taken a Wolfpack slant over the last four years. Coach Dick Sheridan got the Royal Escort from Keenan Stadium in 1988. The situation did not change for North Carolina in 1989. All everything high school quarterback Chucky Burnett was introduced to the struggle in convincing fashion as the Wolfpack feasted once again. But North Carolina has improved steadily, and the Tar Heels started to show it on defense for the two men in 1990. NC State would call in some great last-second heroics as Damon Hartman booted a 56-yard miracle, allowing the Wolfpack to escape Chapel Hill. But Mac Brown was still looking for his offense to gel when these two squared off in Raleigh a year ago, and turnovers denied North Carolina once more. During the Mac Brown era, the Tar Heels have done the expected. Today, Brown says that won't be enough. People are talking about when will North Carolina take the next step. If we're good enough to take the step, it happens. If you're not, you sit around and talk about it all the time. So we don't need to be talking about doing it. We need to do it. to Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, site of the 82nd renewal of the bitter arch rivalry between the North Carolina Tar Heels and the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Martin. You know, North Carolina State, today's battle is a case of getting back up from a loss to Florida State a week ago. For North Carolina, they have plenty of opportunities to make major statements about the direction of their football program with games remaining with Clemson, Georgia Tech, Florida State, and Virginia but somehow none would have the impact that a win over North Carolina State would deliver to the Tar Heel faithful who have waited four years for such an occasion to happen along with us today of course is Mike Hogwood and he's standing by somewhere here in Keenan Stadium in the football complex talking about how North Carolina has prepared for this moment. Steve we're inside Keenan Fieldhouse this is the trophy room just one of the many places that has been renovated since Mac Brown became head coach there's a new weight room locker rooms have been upgraded Mac Brown has had some successful recruiting years the football team is improving but Many people judge North Carolina's football success on whether or not they beat the big rival, NC State. Under Mac Brown, they have not done it. The pressure is on North Carolina, and Mac Brown knows it. I'm not sure in coaching anymore there is a benchmark uh, ball game for your program, but all we've done so far is what we're supposed to do. We were supposed to win in Winston-Salem, and we did. We came home, and we won against Furman and Army. And that's what's expected of this team. And I'm very proud of the team that we've responded uh, in the games that we needed to win. But now, with NC State coming in, it, it's considered an even game, but we haven't beaten them in four years. So the thing that this game will do with us is let us see we didn't play very well in, in Raleigh last year, and, and NC State physically whipped us. So our, our preseason's over. Uh, it's time now to find out if we have made some progress since last year. For North Carolina State, it's a case of re-revving the engines. And when we come back, we'll talk to Dick Sheridan, coach of the Wolfpack, about just how he expects to do that against the Tar Heels this afternoon. College Football 92 on Prime Network is brought to you by Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Oldsmobile redefines quality. Here's proof. Call 1-800-THE-TEST to get independent test results from a 100,000-mile real-world test of the new Oldsmobile Achieva against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry. Learn how Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. You'll even get a free video documenting the test. Achieva. Quality redefined. From the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile. The power of intelligent engineering. Wouldn't it be great if your neighbor was Wally Dallenbach, the Keystone Beer Winston Cup driver? Wally, great car. Want to take a first spin, Dave? A spin? And keep her under 170, Dave. 170? See Wally Dallenbach, or possibly his neighbor Dave, race the Keystone Beer stock car in the Winston Cup Series. Well, how'd you drive, Dave? Well, she drifts a little in three. No problem. But we need to bleed the brakes. It's Wouldn't that be there. great? Another day in the trenches got you down, been kicked around, so now you're all strung out. Maybe caught in a jam and have a bad attitude. This is gonna be some sort of bad dream! <laughs> Don't have a stroke, we can save you. 
Just get off your feet and get away from it all. Take a break, relax, refuel. Watch Prime and get relief from the everyday grind. See all of the action of 1993 Rangers baseball with the best available seats for the final season in Arlington Stadium with Rangers season tickets. By purchasing season tickets, you will have the opportunity for the best seats in the new ballpark in 1994 and the All-Star Game in 1995. Plan now to catch all of the exciting times of Rangers baseball in the final season at Arlington Stadium. For season ticket information, call 817-273-5. Welcome back to Chapel Hill on a steadily improving day weather-wise. And Jack Corrigan, when you look at this game, a lot of people are quick to say that this game probably means more to North Carolina than it does to North Carolina State. Not necessarily so. Oh, I don't think so. I mean, you're in a situation for State. They've had a tough schedule, the, the hard loss to Florida State last week, and all of a sudden you're at a game that maybe is the turning point of a season. You win, you're in good shape. You lose, all of a sudden it gets real tough. And Dick Sheridan's glad he's playing an arts rival coming off the loss last week. No, I think that any time you have a, a big game like we have with Florida State and you've invested a lot physically and emotionally, that there's a chance for a letdown. But when you follow it with a game against your, you know, your arch rival, I, I think you have really less to worry about. I, I think the, the way our conference schedule is this year, we're going to have a, a lot of big games following big games. And I think the teams uh, throughout the year who can, can play at their best week after week is going to certainly have the best chance of winning that Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. Both head coaches are worried about injuries and with an update of what's going on in that area, let's take you down to the field and Mike Hogwood. Thanks a lot, Steve. First of all, let me say, boy, is it loud down here. This sellout crowd already making a lot of noise. Now, when you talk about a big rival game like North Carolina and North Carolina State, the players are emotionally high. They give a little bit more effort. They have a little less regard for their body. Case in point, a year ago in the game in Raleigh for NC State, Terry Jordan, the quarterback, broke his arm. Billy Ray Haynes knocked out of the game, the great linebacker. Tommy Thickpin carried off the field on a stretcher. Well, coming into this game, North Carolina is a bit concerned with injuries. Tommy Thickpin hurt an ankle against Army. Three offensive linemen were banged up in that Army game. Center Randall Parsons, guard Sean Hawker, and tackle Ethan Albright. All should play today. But what Mac Brown is concerned about is that they have missed a whole lot of practice this week, and he's worried about their effectiveness in the game. But somehow you get a feeling they'll be ready and will be ready for the kickoff. NC State and North Carolina. football on your local prime affiliate. Jack, you look great. New clubs, new shoes, new ball. Well, it's the new me, Bill. New golf game, too. We'll see. It's showtime. Showtime. Whoa! Maybe a two iron, Bill? Yeah, a two iron. I just don't get it. Well, it's showtime, Bill. And it's not the shoes, it's not the clubs, it's not the ball. It's this latest video from Golf Digest. How to get distance and accuracy. A video? Yeah, anyone can get it. And it's free when you subscribe to Golf Digest. Huh? Outdrive your partner with this half-hour instructional video, free with a one-year subscription to Golf Digest. Just $19.77. Call 800-592-1222. Imagine this video and Golf Digest. Call 800-592-1222. <laughs> Top Turf Saturday delivers as Georgia comes for the conference crown, but Arkansas stands in their way. Or NC State and Georgia Tech next Saturday on HSE.
Welcome back to Keenan Stadium. 52,000 plus on hand for this one. North Carolina State at 3 and 1 against the North Carolina Tar Heels at 3 and 0. Oh. North Carolina State won the opening coin toss, but they have deferred their option to the second half. And North Carolina will receive. This is the 82nd meeting. As you can see, though, since 1956, it's been dead even despite the Tar Heels' big lead in it. North Carolina State has dominated the last four, and North Carolina's offense hopes to have a better day than that graphic has suggested over the last five meetings. Temperature is 66. Our wind out of the north at three. Humidity is up there at 60%, but it's a far sight better than it was earlier this morning when the fog was socked in around Keenan Stadium. It's a gradually improving day. Not much wind at all today, not much of a factor. As you look at Steve Vitatich getting set to kick it away. North Carolina State. Actually, that's uh, Jimmy Ziskai. Jimmy Ziskai is going to be kicking off. Vitatich will be held for the placement kicks for points. And it's Randy Jordan getting set to receive. Taking over where Eric Blunt left off. A fine legacy of returning a year ago. There's the kick. Jordan has it at the four to one and away. Jordan, nice hole up the middle and keeps his feet to the 31-yard line. Brought down by Mike Reed and Carlos Pruitt, among others. A 27-yard return for the Tar Heels. And here's how they start up for the Tar Heels. Jason Stanisek will be at quarterback. Basically what we anticipated, it seems like Mike Thomas operates better coming off the bench. That offensive line will watch the ankle of Randall Parsons, who had to leave last week against Army. First and ten. And off deep goes to Natron Means. He's straight ahead. And he's driven back. Got to the point of attack. John Akins and Ricky Logo on the tackle. Carl Reeves, the speedy, lightweight defensive lineman. Damon Covington starting at inside linebacker. Greg Giannamore will play a lot. And the secondary, a good one for NC State. They'll be without William Strong, their nickelback, however. He had arthroscopic knee surgery last Sunday. Second and ten now for North Carolina. At their own 31-yard line. Jason Stanisek roll. Throws complete to the tight end. That's DeLong. And he has it out to the 40-yard line. It's going to be a gain of nine. It'll bring up third down and one. Mac Brown likes to start with the conservative passes for his young quarterbacks. This is a good play for Jason Stanisek because if the corner man comes, then DeLong, the tight end, just slips off the block, and it's the easy little dump pass, and they get good solid yardage. Third down and one, North Carolina flipping along at about 40% on third down conversion. At their own 40-yard line. Stanisek, the pitch to me. He has the first down and more. Brought down by Sebastian Savage and Ricky Turner in NC State territory at the 43 and 18 yard game. You have to be courageous to be a quarterback in an option attack. Watch Jason Stanisek take the lick, but wait till the last possible second to make the pitch. That enabled Natron Means to step inside of Keith Battle and pick up very good yardage. Kind of gives you the assurance when you've got two quarterbacks, one of them's going to take that sort of licking. First and ten. North Carolina changing up. Here is Means. Dances out of the hole. And just through the grasp of Mike Reed, he's flattened at the 35-yard line. A gain of eight. Patron Means will be the first to tell you that the guy who lines up in front of him, what's the block of Mike Falkers in 34 on Damian Covington right there. He drove Covington, make that David Merritt rather than Covington. He drove Merritt seven yards into the secondary. Randy Jordan takes Means' place at tailback. It's second down and a long two. And NC State territory to 36. Falkers in the fullback straight ahead. He's brought down there by David Merritt. And Damian Covington very close to the first down. Now he's got it. North Carolina keeps moving. NC State right now, Steve, is running a lot of a, their three-man defensive front and putting the linebackers off the line and wide. I think they are more concerned about the outside game of, it, of North Carolina here in the early going. Three wide receivers for the first time for North Carolina. First and ten. Stanisek throws a little look in to DeLong once again, and he's down to the 21-yard line. A gain of 11 on the play, 13 on the play, actually. 
It's a little bootleg action. You get the defense following Randy Jordan. DeLong slips off his block, and he was outside of Tyler Lawrence and picked up another first down. Second time they've used that particular receiver. Holiday now split wide to the top side with Jerry as the slot. Felton is split wide to the short side of the field on first and 10 at the 21 of North Carolina State. Jordan gets the pitch. Jordan is drilled by Tyler Lawrence and gets barely back to the line of scrimmage if he did it all. Flattened at the 22 for a loss of one. Well, Tyler Lawrence lost a couple of battles early on to Greg DeLong, but not this time. Look at him work right off the block of DeLong. Hold that inside shoulder in place and stuff Randy Jordan for no gain. Scott Felice sealed off both linebackers with a block there as Mac Brown looks on. His team staring at second down and 10 at the 21-yard line. Natro means back as the lone setback. Three wide receivers, wide side of the field. Stanisek over the middle to DeLong. Complete to the 10. Has the first down. Covington and Turner bring him down after an 11-yard game. Well, both these teams the past couple of years have used their tight ends like an extra offensive lineman, but here in 92, Carolina and State have used the tight end much more efficiently. Third catch already on this drive for Greg DeLong. They've all been little delays, and he's been open. North Carolina State has a great deal of respect for North Carolina's wideouts. The chief beneficiary of that has been the tight end, and DeLong is lined up in a slot. Here comes Mead. Spin from one tackle, but not much there. Carl Reeves is one of the players involved in the tackle. John Aikens down there as well. And David Merritt off the bottom of the pot. Mac Brown and his staff concerned right now with a situation that has plagued them in their first three games. They have moved the ball well, but when they get down into the red zone, the scoring zone, inside the opponent's 30, they've made too many turnovers and come away with too many field goals, not enough six-pointers. That's what they want to get, particularly here. Both teams have struggled in this area of the field. Tenth play of the drive, second down. North Carolina cannot get another first down. Blitz is on, and Keith Battle sacks Stanisek back to the 20-yard line. Well, they sent the whole ship that time. Merritt, Battle, Covington, they were all coming. Stanisek saw Merritt because he was right in his face, but he was blindsided by Keith Battle and had no chance to look for Stephen Jerry, the guy he wanted to hit on a post route. There's the drive update. Third down and goal, but North Carolina backed out to their own 18. Three wide receivers in, means the lone setback. Stanisek checking off. Pitch goes to Means, not much there. Battle gets him once, but Means squirts out. Turner and Reed drive him out at the 14-yard line. It will not be enough for a first down, and the kicking unit is on. Well, Natron, with his great balance and strength, moves the ball eight yards closer for this field goal try. Keith Battle had him in the backfield, but you usually need a little more than that to stop a guy like Natron Means. Trip Pignetti, two for three. His longest this season has been 33 yards. This one will be a 28-yard boot out of the hold of Jay Boyd. Pick is up, and it is good. North Carolina cashes in, but it's only three. Mac Brown had hoped for six. Didn't happen, but the Tar Heels have the lead, 3-0. in the Atlantic Coast Conference. You make the call. Stop at Exxon and vote your favorite players onto the Exxon Supreme Team. The official ACC Supreme Team. Sponsored by Exxon. Services. 
This is an effort to reach men and women who served in the United States Armed Forces. It concerns benefits reserved exclusively for honorably discharged veterans aged 30 to 75. Please use the toll-free number to respond. Call now for free information on a veterans-only life insurance plan that costs just $1 a week. When you qualify, you lock in the highest possible benefit amount available to you. These veterans' life insurance benefits are guaranteed never to go down. You are eligible if you serve during peacetime or war, active duty or reserves, or any branch of service. Call now and you'll also get a free guide to veterans' benefits that explains government benefits you may be entitled to collect. Only veterans, their spouses and widows aged 30 to 75 qualify for this exclusive offer. Term life insurance for just one dollar a week. Don't wait. Call this toll-free number now for your free information and free guide to veterans' benefits from Veterans Life Insurance Company. Welcome back to Keenan Stadium. There's our score in our Exxon ACC Game of the Week. North Carolina hits pay dirt first. The 28-yard field goal from the foot of Trip Vignetti. And now Ben Crosland, the redshirt freshman out of Dallas, will get set to kick it away for the Tar Heels. Back deep to receive for North Carolina State. Anthony Barber, one of the top kick returners in the league. And, of course, Reggie Lawrence will be back with him. Speed to spare out of those two. There's Barber out of Garner, North Carolina. We're just about ready to go. North Carolina on the board first. Three to nothing. As this rivalry heats up in its 82nd meeting. Short kick this time by Crosby. Barber at the 17. Reverses field. Hitchcock in pursuit. Barber squares the shoulders and gives a nice return out to the 42-yard line. Jimmy Hitchcock caught up from him from behind. A flag on the play, however, back at the 28-yard line. A 25-yard return, but let's wait for the rule. Usually when a kick return man changes directions like that, you're going to get the block from behind. The illegal block in the back during the run back. See if we can see it in our replay. Right there would probably be the spot. It looked like number 82 for Carolina was blocked in the back, and it negates a good run by Anthony Barber. Usually coaches see a guy reverse his field like that on kick coverage, and they go, oh, no, but Barber with great speed turned the corner. Unfortunately, for a state's perspective, it got called back, and Terry Jordan will try and get that Wolfpack offense going. Getting over 50% of his passes, but he's thrown five interceptions. The most valuable player in the kickoff classic in North Carolina State. First and ten, the ball back at the 18 of North Carolina State. Barber and Maynard the setback. Maynard, first man through, gets out over the 25 to the 26-yard line. Let's take a look at the starting offense here for North Carolina State. And I think Greg Maynard is going to be a factor behind Anthony Barber. The fullbacks could play a large role this afternoon. Lawrence and Griff is part of a quartet of receivers. Mike G and George Hegeman on the right side and Neil Auer have been outstanding on the offensive line for the Wolfpack in their first four ball games. Eight of eight brings up second down and two at the 26. That's joins in motion and here's Barber. Barber has the first down. And he's up to the 34 yard line brought down by J.R. Bolden. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Word on those injured North Carolina players that we talked about before the game. Everybody survived that first drive except for Randall Parsons who came off the field in a lot of pain. As you can see he's getting a new tape job on his ankles. Hopefully that'll enable him to get back in on the next series. Let's try to find a more important guy along that offensive line to have to replace than the center especially in All-America. Oh without question Carolina does not want to lose Parsons today. First and ten for the Wolfpack. They're at their own 34 yard line. Jordan on the option. Neck head on by Rick Steinbacher at the 40 yard line. Gets up, keeps on ticking. A six yard gain for Jordan, who is actually the third leading ground gainer for NC State. Nearly 50% of the offense for NC State this year has come on first down. But Terry Jordan paid the price that time as Steinbacher, the junior out of Greenville, South Carolina, really introduced himself to Terry Jordan. Second and four at the North Carolina State 40-yard line. 
Jordan to throw. Has a man open. Neil Hour, the tight end, and it's good for the first down at the 46-yard line. Let's take a look at the North Carolina defense. Kurt Brown, J.R. Bolden, and Austin Robbins up front. The linebacking quartet, the really good part of this defense, particularly the All-American Tommy Thigpen. Bernardo Harris coming off a great game. Thomas Smith at right corner, and Gracie Walker, the strong safety, have been the most consistent of a solid secondary. Both teams have used their tight end in passing plays exclusively so far in this ball game. But it's early, first and 10 at the North Carolina State 46. Reggie Lawrence moves. He's got movement all over the place. Carver will run. This play will probably come back. Neil Hour, the tight end, was a half count ahead of the snap, I believe. Looked like Canadian football there for a moment. Motion on the offense. You expect to see these kinds of penalties in an emotional football game. The crowd has been noisy throughout a lot of the people standing the students uh, on both sides standing for this one there's Dick Sheridan Michael Kane a play quarterback for Sheridan in Orangeburg South Carolina high school he is his quarterback coach Michael Kane is into the ball game now for Kurt Brown and a defensive change for North Carolina first down and 15 for the Wolfpack at their own 41 Gary Downs into the ball game at the tailback spot. Here's Jordan to throw. Good ball complete to Gorn. In North Carolina territory and very close to a first down. They give him a generous mark to the North Carolina 43. The tackle made by Baskerville and Walker. It's a 16-yard game. Valencia well, State dominated the first half of action against Florida State a week ago. Just couldn't put points on the board. This is the previous good run by Anthony Barber that got called back by the penalty but the, the first and 15 didn't bother Terry Jordan as they found Goins open on the deep turn in route Eddie has been a very solid receiver this year for Jordan the most reliable the Wolfpack put on the field thus far this season More catches than anyone here's Gary Downs on first down he has stopped for no gain whatsoever Rondell Jones is in the area with Bernardo Harris and Thomas Smith. Bernardo Harris is a guy who makes the play, even though he won't get credit for a tackle from Mac Brown's coaching staff when they look at the video after the ball game. But Harris took on the blocker, Reggie Lawrence, and strung out the play. There was nowhere for Gary Downs to cut up field. Saw Mac Brown pacing the sidelines in his record in North Carolina. He's also coached as a head coach at Appalachian State in Tulane. Ryan Anthony Barber back into the ball game on second down at nine. Ball at the 42. Jordan to throw. Ball is complete to Hinton for the first down. Baskerville makes the stop. An important catch for Robert Hinton. Without question, Hinton dropped a crucial third down pass last week in the second half against Florida State. He barely gets his head turned in time on this one. Well thrown ball by Terry Jordan into double coverage, but it was right there, and the state drive continues to grind down the field. Gain of 11, first and 10. State at the North Carolina 31-yard line. And this has been a difficult area of the field for the Wolfpack to operate in as well. Jordan. Pitches at the last second. But stuffing the play out is Gracie Walker on the pitch to Barber. A little bit of pushing and shoving. Michael Payne knocking down Terry Jordan after the play. We'll see a little bit of that from both sides throughout this one. Well, North Carolina's getting a great break off the line of scrimmage. Got an injured player. It's Liddell George who was in at fullback on the play. And right there at the top of your screen, you see Jordan in an embrace with a Carolina player. And then Michael Payne came over and deposited him on the ground. Working at the left ankle of Liddell George. It was an interesting description. I think it was Carl Torbush, the North Carolina defensive coordinator. An interesting description of Liddell George. I was talking with Carl Thursday about this NC State team, and he said Liddell George is a tailback wide receiver who got lost at the fullback spot. <laughs> Top receiver for the Wolfpack out of that spot. They featured him in runs, and of course his punt returns are made of legend at North Carolina State. He holds all the records in that category. We'll watch his progress here. Hinton on second down in motion. Here is Barber. 
Big opening. Barber down to the 25-yard line. Brought down by Rick Steinbacher. And also Bracey Walker on the play. It's a pickup of seven. Good run by Anthony Barber. Watch number 33, Greg Maynard, leading through the draw play, taking on Steinbacher. That enabled Barber to cut to the outside. Bernardo Harris knocked him off balance. And Cliff Baskerville finished off Barber, but it's third and short. Third and about four. There's North Carolina State over the last two games on third down, and they're in the scoring area to boot. It's been difficult to move here. Jordan, complete. Downs has it inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Brought down by Bracey Walker and Rondell Jones, a 16-yard play. What an emotional third down conversion this is for NC State in general, and Terry Jordan in particular. Good patience that time. He got excellent protection, and Gary Downs had slipped away from Jonathan Perry. You can see on that hit, Mike, he got hit right on the left shoulder, and he left with that arm hanging down. We'll have to check on the situation with Downs. Jordan perfect in four throws for 50 yards. First and goal. The North Carolina eight. Jordan the five. Brought down there by Austin Roberts. Boy, both offenses have really been effective. We're down approaching the four-minute mark of the first period, and each team has had the ball just once. NC State on this drive has overcome several penalties to find themselves three yards away from a go-ahead score. Aubrey Shaw, Greg Maynard, in the backfield. Bullhouse backfield. Second and goal. Shaw gets a carry to the two. Tackle made by Robbins. They lined up Ryan Schultz, the backup tight end, in the backfield that time to add a little more pop to the inside running game. Now Downs will return and Reggie Lawrence will come in as well. Austin Robbins, the junior out of Washington with the big hit. 13th play of the drive. They've used almost six and a half minutes to do it. Third and goal. Downs hit. Big Tommy pin. Thigpen. What a big, big tackle. Big decision time now. Watch the move. Stepped right behind the full block of Sean Johnson. Sean Johnson coming in to find a linebacker, but Thigpen slipped underneath him, stacked up the ball carrier for a loss on the play, and NC State is going to take a timeout because they want to decide, do we go for three or do we take the risk on getting the touchdown? Well, they saw what a running play looked like that time as far as North Carolina's alignment is concerned. I know Dick Sheridan shares the same concern that Matt Brown does in the scoring zone. We must come up with six. He said that last week against Florida State. It proved to be the crucial turning point of the game. Well, you're talking about an offense that has scored only 27 points in the last eight quarters. And 14 of those 27 points came in the fourth periods of those two games with Maryland and Florida State. One more look at the play by the All-American co-captain Tommy Thigpen. See right there, Johnson, 77, is supposed to block Thigpen, but he didn't take the look to his left. Thigpen reading the play and stepping up, making the difference. Here's the history that NC State has to avert. Ten times inside the 30, and they've only come up with 20 points. They don't want to settle for three here. Fourth down and goal, but that's what they're going to do. They're going to send Benetic into the ball game. Kilpatrick with a hole. Tough angle when you're this close. Ball is down. It is up and good. A 17-yarder by Steve Vinicic. So North Carolina State opting to take the safe route out with 2.44 left in the first. We've got a tie ball game. Let's pause now for a word from your local station. July 1992. Oldsmobile goes further than any other car company to redefine quality. Further than the lab. Further than the test track. The Oldsmobile Achieva went 100,000 miles against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry in a real-world test. Independent test results prove Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. 
Achieva, quality redefined. From the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. We're trying to remind guests and members when they come in and register that uh, we are having a pace awareness uh, in effect and that we try to get out and marshal and try to be friendly. We don't try to put people on the spot about trying to get them to speed up. We just try to get them to help us out and mainly just letting people be aware that uh, we need speedy rounds around the golf course to make it more enjoyable. Continuing awareness is what we need to uh, let the public know to get the golfers around the golf course and have an enjoyable day for everybody. Time to go fishing. You want to go fishing? Yeah, let's go fishing. Good morning, Grandpa. Good morning, partner. You ready to go after that lunker today? Yeah. Atta boy. You know what? What? I'm going to catch the biggest fish of the day today. You are? Bigger than Grandpa's? You bet. You better pick out your lucky bait over here, then. As the sun begins to shine in your town and the early morning fog breaks away, wouldn't it be great to dust off the rod and reel and go fishing? Each year, about 60 million Americans go fishing. Fishing is an easy, inexpensive way to bring families together and bring smiles to a lot of faces. Don't let this fishing season pass you by. Take a friend fishing and join in on one of America's great family traditions. North Carolina State ties it up with a 17-yard field goal from Steve Vitatich. Jimmy Siskai getting set to kick it away to Randy Jordan. Two possessions, two exhausting, good-looking, methodical drives, and two field goals. Not much to choose from with these two. Jordan gets it to the five. Jordan, big scene. Flag on the play. Down to 37. Mike Reed, and now Moore extracurricular activity. Now another flag is thrown. Well, it's not far to Raleigh. About a half hour drive. These two student bodies mingle very freely. Not usually that type of exchange breaks out. But well, we could have two different walk-offs here because you're going to get the first penalty, which will be the illegal block taking place while the game is going. You can see the hold right there by Randall Felton on Allen Johnson. The second penalty is a dead ball. On the return, dead ball, personal foul. On so the dead balls both ways will be negated, but you'll have the walk-off on the holding call against Randall Felton. So after all the pushing and shoving it, Hanky fluttering will have the ball back on the Carolina 17-yard line. Hanky fluttering. You like that? A demonstration sport at the Olympics. Well, in 96, that's right. <laughs> it's a 17-yard line. North Carolina gets hurt a little bit more by that possession. Bucky Brooks wide out to the top side. Holiday to the bottom. Stanisek is perfect in three throws. They put the tight end DeLong out wide this time. He's caught all three. Falkerson, the fullback, straight ahead. Nice yardage up to the 26-yard line. Gain of about eight on the play. David Merritt makes the stop. Well, Mike Falkerson getting many more opportunities. You see, he's carried the ball more than 30 times this year, and that is more than he carried in all of the 91 season. Second and two. Falkerson back there with Nate Means. Falkerson again. This time not as fortunate. Carl Reeves, Ricky Logo, and Damian Covington stood him up. No gain on the play. Well, they got real quick, good penetration from number 96, John Aikens. And that just directed Falkerson into the arms of the big guy, Ricky Logo, the co-captain. Future Samoan chief. His uncle's kind of holding the spot down now while Ricky finishes out his football career. Three wide outs for North Carolina on third down and two. Three three the score here at Chapel Hill. Dean. Gonna be close. Covington is there with Carl Reeves. Reeves out of Durham. He's a story. 
220 pound sophomore making the tackle. You see Damon Covington right there. He also helped out on the play. Officials say first down yardage as Scott Felice was the blocker leading the way for Means, and it was enough by about the football's length or so to pick up another first down. It's North Carolina up to their own 27 yard line. Holiday split wide to the short side. Two wide outs to the short side of the field. A lone wide out to the wide side is Bucky Brooks. Means the long setback. Stanisek. Yeah. Incomplete intended for Means. Covington on the play covering. And next week, the Wolfpack continuing on to Georgia Tech. Our Exxon ACC game of the week comes your way from Atlanta. It'll be the Yellow Jackets and the Wolfpack on most of these very same stations. On a first down situation later in the ball game, Steve, we may see that twin receivers to the short side of the field and Stanisek going deep to Steven Jerry. He was open on that play. Second down. Swing pass goes to Means. Means has some operating room. Out to about the 39-yard line. Gain on the play of 12 yards. Let's go to the sideline right now, Mike Hogwood. Well, guys, you can probably sense up in the booth the uh, motion that's down here on the field. Interesting note about last night. The North Carolina State players, 30 miles away, spent the night in their dorm rooms. The North Carolina Tar Heels, to get together, spent the night in a hotel here in Chapel Hill. Well, you know, a lot of coaches do that with a home team, take them away from the distractions. A lot of people on campus, I guess, to each his own as far as preparing for a ball game is concerned. Stanisek with three wide outs. Gets away from Keith Battle this time. And he won't get away from Carl Reed. Salvages the play for maybe a half yard gain. But there's that quickness about Carl Reeves that we've been mentioning. He is not really defensive tackle size, but in the open field, he was able to run down the quarterback, Jason Stanisek. Again, Keith Battle not able to come up with the hit in the backfield. Stanisek trying to buy some time. He thought about throwing back underneath there to Bucky Brooks, but it was probably a good decision to eat the football. Second down and nine at the 40-yard line. Raw play goes to Randy Jordan, and Jordan breaks away. Jordan on his way and brought out of bounds by Sebastian Savage at the 37-yard line. A gain of 22 yards. Great block by Stephen Jerry that allowed Randy Jordan to slip to the outside. Watch number 10 on the right side of your screen. As Jordan cuts to the outside, Jerry right there with a big block on Mike Reed. And then downfield, Corey Holiday trying to help out. Another first down for the Tar Heels and another excursion by Randy Jordan into North Carolina State Territory. Means is back in the backfield now on first and 10 at the 37. Stanisek. Madeline Reeves chasing. This is complete intended for Means. Tyler Lawrence covering on the play. North Carolina loves to throw the quick bootlegs and the quick screens. It takes advantage of the good foot speed of Stanisek. They're safer passes, and you spread the defense more because they like to screen to both sides. But that time, Keith Battle and Carl Reeves got in Stanisek's face so quickly, there was no place for him to go. Second down and 10. Three wide receivers, wide side of the field. Holiday, Brooks, and Garrett. Draw play goes to me. Flag on the play. Means tackled by Ricky Turner and Greg Janimore as he gets to the 26-yard line of NC State. I think they're going to call Curtis Parker for a block from behind back at the 34-yard line as he tried to seal down to enable Means to get outside. Holding on the offense. That's the call on the final play of the first quarter. We have run out of time here in the first. North Carolina and North Carolina State trading field goals. After one quarter of play in Chapel Hill, it's three apiece. You're watching college football on your local prime affiliate. Property owners. If you want to clear overgrown areas, you could struggle with a shaky sickle bar mower like this, or with a handheld brush cutter like this. Or instead, 
You could cut tall grass and weeds, brambles, sumac, even hardwood saplings up to one inch thick with the amazing DR Field and Brush Mower. The Field and Brush Mower chops most everything it cuts. There's no tangled brush to trip over or to pick up. And those big self-propelled wheels roll right through ditches, over bumps and logs with ease. The DR is not for your lawn, but what a job it does with meadows, roadsides, fence lines, walking paths and woodlots. You can clear and maintain them all with the DR, every few weeks, once a season, whenever you want. A big color catalog is just $2. Call toll-free 1-800-423-2121. That's 1-800-423-2121 for your big color catalog all about the amazing DR field and brush mower. English Soccer, Sundays at 8 on HSE. Welcome back to Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. Our Exxon ACC Game of the Week all tied up between North Carolina and North Carolina State at three apiece. I want to remind our stations down the line that we are one break behind in format, but we plan to stick the format from here on through. So Dick Sheridan hoping to stick the plan there, talking with Michael Kane about the play of his quarterback, Terry Jordan. Right now, it's the North Carolina offense that is the object of everybody's attention right now as the Tar Heels are moving. And they're still trying to reorient themselves where the football should be. And I don't think it should be at that 44. Now they're saying the first quarter cannot end on an offensive penalty, I guess. That's right. So they'll, they'll run one play here and then turn it around. I don't know if they'll take the quarter break or just go at it again. behind Jason Stenison. All right, second down. Win not a factor here. Second down, pass is complete. Brooks comes down to the 35-yard line. They held the clock. So we technically have just finally played the last play of the first quarter. So what they will do is reset the field and move the ball to the other side. It'll go to the opposite 34-yard line, a game of 10. It'll leave with a third down and about seven situation. So they'll reset the ball. And North Carolina trying to put together its second long drive of the day. Each team has had the football only once. Both have had drives of 11 in North Carolina's case, 14 in North Carolina State's case, and both have resulted in field goals. North Carolina has not had many third down situations in their two drives. This is their second third down situation. It's third down. As Jack said about seven at the 34-yard line of NC State. So now on the third down before the field goal, because it was third and long, they gave the ball to Natro Means. Don't be surprised. Keep an eye on Greg DeLong, the tight end, lined up at the top of the screen. Two wide outs. Means gets the handoff. Battle gets Means. Keith Battle has already got a sack to his credit. Nailed Means for a loss, and the punting unit comes on. Going to bring Mike Thomas on, and... Rather than try what would be a field goal of nearly 55 yards, they're going to try and back up that state offense. Keith Battle that time after two misses in the backfield. The junior out of Asheville makes the play there. Here's Thomas averaging close to 50 yards a kick. He tries to pooch this one, and it goes straight up. The infield fly rule is called. To the 25-yard line, an 11-yard boot. And North Carolina State will get the football back. Mike Thomas heads to the sidelines. We'll be back. Wouldn't it be great if you could afford a luxurious mansion? For you and all your friends? Of course, the place needed some updates. Like a bowling alley and a pool table. Naturally, you'd have an open house. Oh, dear! With beer! Filtered Keystone, Keystone Light, and Keystone Drive. Bottle beer taste in a can. 
The conflict, the elation, the determination, the anguish. It's comedy and seriousness. It's a smile and a tear for the victory and to the defeated. It's competition at its best on your source for sports, Prime Network. Sports go full speed ahead this October on HSE. Tune in for Tough Turf Saturdays and catch perennial college powers from coast to coast along with some high-impact collisions in the SWC and the Southland Conference. We'll also set them up and knock them down with SWC Women's Volleyball and shift gears with Fast Track Thursdays. Fall sports are full speed ahead this October on HSE. When the blistering sun parches the southwest, your engine needs a motor oil that's built to take the heat. Amelie. We started with premium base oils, added viscosity improvers to prevent thermal breakdown, extra oxidation protection for longer engine life, and enhanced high temperature performance. The result? Amelie Southwest Formula Motor Oil, built to keep its cool when the heat is on. Ask your retailer for Amelie today. Once the TV goes on, my dad couldn't care less about me doing my homework. Show me a parent who really cares, and I'll show you a kid who can learn. Mike Hogwood in Chapel Hill, North Carolina State and North Carolina, even at three. Just underway here in the second quarter of play. Mike Thomas is now officially clocked 10-yard punt. Gives North Carolina State the ball at their own 26-yard line. Here's Jordan. The throw is complete to Hinton, his second reception of the day, out to the 38-yard line. It's going to be a gain of 11 on the play, 12 actually. A, a much more confident Terry Jordan and Robert Hinton for that matter. Second time they've run this play, a little inside look and then break to the sidelines, get it beyond Bracey Walker and underneath Cliff Baskerville. It's that little naked boot, if you will. Didn't have a whole lot of help in front of him, but the play action throws Jonathan Perry long enough for George to be able to throw the football. His fifth straight completion. Barber in motion. Maynard will own setback. Maynard, the fullback, gets the call. Pinpen knocks him down, but not before he's got close to first down yardage, and I believe he's got it. 11 yards on the play, out of the 48. What a block by Todd Ward, the junior center. Watch. Well, you won't see that much of it, except right to the right side of your screen, right there, 54, just completely turned. J.R. Bolden, the nose man for North Carolina. Watch, right in the center of your screen. Look at Ward just run the bigger guy out of the play. Huge hole for Maynard. First and 10, NC State, yard shy of midfield. Pitch to Jordan, out of the barber. And a nice open field tackle by Rondell Jones with a two carry of eight yards on the play. Well, the NC State M.O. is holding true to form here. Excellent productivity on first down. Most of this season, they have had great yardage on first down. Look at what they've done this year and so far today. It's been the third down failures that have hurt the Wolfpack. Second down at about two, the 43 of North Carolina. Rickus in motion. Low developing play to Barber, and he's wrapped up by Kerry Mock. Not much gain, if anything. Mock in the ball game for Tommy Thickbed right now. Thickbed, of course, injured an ankle last week against the cadets of West Point, and I think he's really just getting a breather at this point. I don't think there is a reoccurrence of that ankle injury, but we'll try and keep an eye on that for you. Carolina, though, has a very deep linebacker for Mock and Jacobs. We'll see a lot of action today. Third down and two. Score tied at three. Full house backfield, including the tight end, Chris Cotton. And there is Greg Maynard for the first down, close to the 40-yard line. Enough for the first down. Payne helps out on the tackle. One of those plays where you actually run behind all the action to get the people leading. 
leaning right, you get your offensive line leaning right, and you actually give the ball right back up the middle. And Maynard, with the good size of 240 pounds, can do a lot of that on his own. Nick Sheridan looking on. Never seen, never lost here at Chapel Hill, strangely enough. He's 5 and 1 against North Carolina in his career at NC State. Here's Jordan. He's watching G. Jordan loses a football. A lot of blue shirts in the vicinity. North Carolina's picked it up. Bernardo Harris. Carl Torboy said his defensive group had to get more turnovers. They forced only three coming into this ball game. Terry Jordan, after a good run, has the ball stripped away by number 24, Bernardo Harris, right here. Stops the state drive. Thomas Smith picks it up, and North Carolina has the football back with a score tie. in Manhattan on Wednesday, Frankfurt on Thursday, Paris, Rome, and Vienna after that. He believes it's better to do business across a table than over a fax machine. This year, he'll fly more than 100,000 miles with us because he knows nobody understands him better than we do. At Delta, when we say we love to fly and it shows, this is where it shows. Oldsmobile redefines quality. Here's proof. Call 1-800-THE-TEST to get independent test results from a 100,000-mile real-world test of the new Oldsmobile Achieva against Honda Accord and Toyota Camry. Learn how Achieva outperformed Accord and Camry in total cost, which includes maintenance, repair, and operating costs. You'll even get a free video documenting the test. Achieva, quality redefined from the company that went far enough to prove it. Oldsmobile, the power of intelligent engineering. Excuse me, do you know what stock options are? I wish I did. The information you know you should know is in the Wall Street Journal's video guide to money and markets. This exclusive 30-minute video is free. When you call for 13 weeks of the journal for just $37, that's over 20% off the newsstand price. Call toll-free 800-522-5333 for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and your free video on money and markets. That's 800-522-5333. Back in Chapel Hill, there's the score. Three apiece in the second quarter here at Keenan Stadium. The North Carolina State Wolfpack turning the ball over for the seventh time on fumbles this season. They came in with a minus two differential coming into this ball game. First and 10, North Carolina at their own 28. Stanisek pitches to Nate Throne Means. And Means drops the football, but it's blown dead. It will be blown dead at the 33-yard line. Turnovers, Jack, have reared their head at several points in this rivalry, especially against the Tar Heels in recent years. Well, without question, the uh, turnovers last year, and they all came in the scoring zone for North Carolina, turned out to be the difference in the game. The long touchdown run on the interception by Sebastian Savage, the coaching score. Natron Means, 37 rushes, or 37 carry, 37 yards. Second down, six. By Savage and brought down at the 35 yard line. Down to the sidelines we go to Mike Hogwarts. Steve, Terry Jordan really tries for that extra effort when he runs the football. He's had a problem with fumbling before. One of the things he's doing today on the sideline is he's carrying a football with him when he's not in the game, just trying to make sure he keeps the feel and get, keeps the hold on the football. He was really upset with himself in that last fumble. Third and four for North Carolina. Three wide receivers, wide side of the field. Score tied at three. We're in the second quarter. Stanisek, straight down the middle. Complete no! DeLong can't hang on. DeLong can't hang on to the perfectly thrown ball of Stanisek. 
put right there. Well, Greg's already caught three balls this afternoon, and they run a corner route to the tight end. You see how he is behind Tyler Lawrence, the linebacker, and just couldn't find the handle. Mike Thomas back in the punt for the second time today. Here's his foot about this time. George has it at the 20. George. Nice return out to the 37-yard line. It's a 45-yard punt, but a 17-yard return. And once again, the coverage was out kicked. Well, there were more than a few referees in the stands wearing Carolina blue who thought that number 44, D.J. Williams, who was down, or make that John Bradley, covering on the kick was hit from behind. Mac Brown still screaming about it on the sidelines. It made the difference if they would have called that a penalty. State would have been back inside their 15. Instead, they're out beyond their 35. 37-yard line to be exact. First and 10. Jordan. The throw complete to Neil Hour. Out to the 44 to 45-yard line. Dropped the ball, but it's blown dead. Gain of eight on the play. Baskerville on the tackle. Well, you talk to opposing coaches, and they say the difference between Todd Harrison, who's now in the National Football League, last year's starting tight end for NC State, and Neil Hour this year. Harrison, the bigger of the two, but every coach that I've talked to, defensive coordinator, has talked about the athletic ability of Neil Hour at tight end for the Wolfpack. Anthony Barber in motion. Maynard, the fullback, gets the call. Maynard into the secondary of North Carolina. Takes it down for first down yardage at the 46-yard line. Just like we saw last week against Florida State, the Wolfpack offense very effective moving the football till they get down into the scoring zone. The turnover on their last possession after the long drive on their first possession resulted in just the field goal. Ten-yard gain that time by Greg Maynard, first and ten. At the North Carolina 46. Jordan dropped back going long has Griffiths complete big block at the corner he's marked out at the four yard line Eddie Goins what a pop along the sidelines and what a perfectly thrown ball on the corner route to Griffiths rolling away from the pass all the way back across the field and watch the hit on Baskerville. Well, we'll get to the ground level look at Griffiths running all the way across the field away from the quarterback and watch Baskerville get whacked right there by Eddie Goins. Out at the four, first and ten after a 42-yard gain. It's first and goal. Here's Maynard. Straight ahead, second effort, gets him close. Steinbacher's got a hold of one leg. Bernardo Harris has another. And fortunately for Mr. Maynard, they didn't make a wish. Maynard wished his way close to the end zone. He's down inside the one. Big second down goal. They also bring in Chris Cotton, the fullback last year, now playing middle guard number 93, will line up as an extra blocker. Now he comes out of the ball game as they bring Gary Downs into the football game. John Maynard back behind. Lots of penetration there at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if he got in. Well, there's a flag on the play. The penetration was a little too soon. Looked like Michael Payne or somebody was up over the top in a hurry. Well, Carolina has been very close a number of times. I I'm wondering if Terry Jordan calls a lot of plays on the same snap count because they have really been anticipating the, Car the NC State Off snap. Sides on the defense. Well, you get close like this, you try and time it come over the top if you can and watch right there number 91 that's Troy Barnett who was ahead of the snap count so it'll move it to, from six inches to three inches from the goal line but give him an extra shot at it. second down and goal Cotton back in Shaw and Meaner the setback Jones has 
his jersey caught up into the chin strap of George Hegeman. That's why the pile took a while to unfold. He doesn't make it by much, but right there, the penetration just enough before he was popped on the play by Troy Barnett, and NC State has the lead. Vinicic, perfect on 11 point actors this year out of the hold of Tim Kilpatrick. It is up. And it is good. And North Carolina State steps out in front by seven. The length of a Greg Maynard touchdown. With 8.07 left to go in the first half of play, the Wolfpack up 10-3. Anytime we can grow professionally, educationally as professionals in our own field, we can take that back to our clubs. Uh, we can help utilize it in educational clinics at our clubs to teach our members and help them better understand the game. We are the liaison between the public and the game of golf, and the PGA of America does a great job in keeping us educated and well-informed so that we can do our jobs better. Astros welcome the Padres. McGriff and Sheffield power San Diego's potent offense, but Houston's D could be deadly. Padres and Astros live Tuesday at 7:30 on HSE. Carolina State leading North Carolina 10 to 3. 807 left to go in the first half of our Exxon ACC game of the week. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood. Terry Jordan has been flawless in seven passes. There's Greg Maynard with the touchdown. The key play, the 42 yard strike to Ray Griffiths. Well, Terry Jordan just about set. Jimmy Siskai getting set to kick it away. Randy Jordan waiting deep for North Carolina. 10 3. Oh, pass. for an affair catch by William Henderson. Wolf pushing and shoving going on down there. Neither team's special team coach probably too happy with the kickoffs offered by either kicker. Well, I think uh, on that situation, NC State did not want to allow Jordan a long return, so they wanted to kick it high and short, but I think well, not quite that short, no. Ball at the 29-yard line. First and 10 for North Carolina. Henderson, or rather Falkerson, to the backfield. Here's Stanisek to throw. That's intended as in his complete to Holiday. What a catch. Did you know. he catch it? No. Now the fans down here below us on the Carolina side thought that Sebastian Savage a little bit too much of an exclamation point on this tackle after the ball skipped off the hands of Corey Holiday. You won't see it. Holiday missed many of those. And the two point takedown right there. Tried to get a little figure four in there as well. Stanisek, two of his last six, but five of nine overall, facing second and ten from his own 29. The pitch to me. Tries to turn the corner. Keith Battle is there. A 
along with Sebastian Savage and Greg Janamore. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Steve, you may have noticed that when State got down to the goal line of the offensive series, normally number 45 Gary Downs would go into the game. He did not. He's got a sprained ankle. They're going to hold him out at least for the rest of the first half. So we'll check on his progress in the second. Right now, his Wolfpack leading here by seven and facing a third down defensively, third and 11. 10-3, North Carolina State, North Carolina with the ball. Denison. Sacked by Logo. Second sack of the day for the North Carolina State Wolfpack. Well, they had good coverage downfield. They rushed only four men, and Ricky Logo, when you rush only four men, you want to collapse the pocket from the middle. And Logo just came right through Scott Felice and dropped Stanisek for the loss. Mike Thomas will get a chance to air this one out. And he does. Wow. George at the 20. Flag into the play. Nine hard fought yards to the 29 yard line. A 60 yard punt by Mike Thomas. And we're going to get some kind of illegal block against the Wolfpack. A 59 yard punt by Mike Thomas. 10 yards off the return by Miguel George. It's another flag back up field, however, at the Carolina 37. Now that might also be a a defensive holding situation trying to keep one of the Carolina coverage guys from getting downfield. Did Mike Thomas ever get into that? You know, sometimes you say a guy outkicks his coverage at 50 yards. At 60 yards, he outkicks the universe. It takes you a while. The defense may be 20 yards away, but it takes a while to cover those 20 yards. Well, for most of the time for Mike Thomas, in addition to the distance, he also still gets the tremendous hang time on the long one. So, well, it takes Holding a while for the... On the receivers. Illegal block on the receivers. Multiple choice opportunity for the Carolina penalty call here. Whichever one they take, it will put the ball inside the Wolfpack 20-yard line. But I was going to say, Steve, that he got such good hang time on that, even though it was 60 yards, the coverage team was not that far off of Liddell George when he caught the football because it hung up there for so long. And that is a very difficult ball to catch. Thomas's kick seemed to progress upward and then just they just take on a life of their own. Watch as this ball comes down to Liddell George. He'll catch it near his own 20 yard line and you can see as he catches the football the closest Carolina man is 13 yards away from him. But unfortunately for the Wolfpack, they had two guys holding on that play, as well as the one back up field. It goes all the way back to the 10-yard line. This will be the deepest start that any team has had here this afternoon. North Carolina State first to 10 of their own 10. is complete. Barber still on his feet at the North Carolina State 28-yard line. Gain of 18. Austin Robbins on the tackle. Good call by Ted Kane, the offensive coordinator for NC State. It's a gutty call to run the double screen deep in your own territory. Look how close Jordan is to getting sacked here by Kurt Brown. But because Brown is in that much, it means there's nobody in front of Barber. And had he not run into one of his own men upfield, he might have gone for further than he did. It was Mike G. He nearly crawled over. Running straight ahead, Liddell George out to the 30-yard line. Gain of two. Austin Robbins once again on the tackle. There's Robbins out of Washington, D.C. But the game has turned more red and white than Carolina blue and white in this first half. The Carolina offense has stagnated on its last couple of possessions, while State has only been stopped by itself this afternoon. One turnover in the game belonging to the Wolfpack. Power in motion. Toss goes to Barber, and he's going nowhere. Tommy Thigpen sets Barber back for a four-yard loss. Tried to run the reverse option to the short side of the field. A good guess by Tommy Thigpen. 
He was reading Barber on the play, anticipated the option going away from the action to the short side. And Anthony Barber, when he saw that pitch come and looked up and saw nothing but 40 in his vision and said, this is not what we had anticipated. Barber left last week's game with Army with an ankle injury, a Buckus Award nominee. Third down coming in 12 for North Carolina State. They lead it 10-3. Jordan being pursued and sacked by Kurt Brown. Carolina has not had good pass pressure, at least the kind of pass pressure they've wanted in their first three ball games. They get it here from the top of your screen. Kurt Brown just overwhelmed Eric Taylor. And the junior one-time quarterback runs down another quarterback for a big loss. Tim Kilpatrick, there's his season average, and he's on for the first time today to punt the ball away. Back deep to receive is going to be Steven Jarrett. Line drive kick, very returnable. Jerry. Jet back to the 48-49 yard line, a seven yard return on the 40 yard kick, and the Tar Heels will have excellent field position when we come back. North Carolina State leading the Tar Heels 10 to three. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. In the pages of National Geographic magazine. For only $21 a year, all the wonders of our world unfold before you. You'll enjoy award-winning photographs that explore the remarkable diversity of our world. Whether you're trekking across Africa or racing to adventure, National Geographic takes you far beyond ordinary reporting. Join the Society, and you'll also receive up to six valuable reference maps. National Geographic promises you the best and nothing less. Call 1-800-592-1222. Charge it if you like, or send $21.3650 in Canada to National Geographic. Or call 1-800-592-1222. <laughs> Of Saturday delivers as Georgia comes for the conference crown, but Arkansas stands in their way. Or NC State and Georgia Tech next Saturday on HSE. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood in Chapel Hill where North Carolina State leads North Carolina 10-3. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of it without the express written permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. First and 10, North Carolina. Not much running room there for Mike Fulkerson, the fullback. Tackled by Janamore, Daryl Beard also helping out on the tackle for the Wolfpack. That NC State defense has been pleased with the work of their second group of defensive linemen, Daryl Beard, Andreas O'Neill, and the freshman Mike Harrison, enabled them to stay fresher on that defensive front. Second down, and about 10. Stanisek with play action. Complete to Randall Felton for the first down. They'll mark him down at the 34-yard line. Ricky Turner with the tackle, a 14-yard gain on the play. The play action gave Jason Stanisek good protection. The linebacker is frozen on the play. Fake the ball to Natro Means. That enables the pocket to form and a good ball right in the teeth of that NC State zone. First and 10 for North Carolina. to throw once more. This one's complete again to Felton. He is jacked hard by David Merritt. But picks up a nice seven yards at least to the 27, actually the 28-yard line of North Carolina State. The productivity on the previous play enables you to have more variety
variety on first down now because you've got a little momentum going. Well, Felton paid for that catch. It sets you in that second immediate. Second and four to be exact at the 28. Vanessa. Plant looks again. Same play. Felton this time for big yardage. Felton coming out of bounds at the six, maybe the five yard line. Big block by Corey Holiday to give Felton an extra 10 or 15 yards. What's the old line? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If the play works, keep using it. Third straight time over the middle to Felton. Watch number one, left side of your screen. As he bops Sebastian Savage. Wayne Washington, the injured Wolfpack player, as you look at Randall Felton with his third catch of the day. Felton, the senior out of Durham, North Carolina. There's Stanisek. With cooled off for a while, and all of a sudden now is heated up. Well, field position is a factor. Confidence is a factor. He had that tough completion to felt to get the first down into a lot of traffic. Guy gets a good pass completion like that, and his confidence level zooms, and all of a sudden he figures, well, hey, I'm going to complete every one of them. Danisek, 8 for 12 for 96 yards, three of them to Randall Felton for 43. First and goal, ball at the five-yard line. Jerry in motion, play action, Stanisek looking for Jerry, overthrows him. Sebastian Savage covering. Savage with good coverage, and Allen Johnson in the ball game, replacing Washington for the moment after he was banged up, was hanging on hanging on to Greg DeLong, maybe literally. Here's Jerry trying to fight through the traffic. Sebastian Savage knocked him off his route, and that really made the difference. Second and goal. North Carolina at the North Carolina State five-yard line. Two and a half to play in the first half. 10-3, Wolfpack. Hit is behind me. will tackle him down at the 13-yard line, but it's an eight-yard loss. NC State anticipating the option, and Mike Reed levels Jason Stanisek. Watch number three come. No, it isn't. It's Keith Battle, who actually hit Stanisek. Reed then knocked out the lead blocker. Nate Trump still able to make something out of it, but instead of first and goal on the five, it's now third and goal on the 13. Loss of eight on the play. 10-7 the score, North Carolina State in the lead. North Carolina trying to take advantage. Janicek scrambles out of the pocket. Has to run now. Crosses field, touchdown! What a difference a year makes. Carolina football team is better than a year ago because they've got a year's more experience and they've got people like number 16 and number 15. Mike Thomas now operating the offense. This is just a remarkable play. Spins away from Carl Reeves. Sets up the defense with the fake throw. And now look at him cut against the grain. Get by David Merritt and Sebastian Savage to score the touchdown. Trip Pignetti for the point after. And we've got a tie ball game. Jason Stanisek makes it 10 to 10. With a minute 36 left in the second quarter. North Carolina was facing disaster after a drop on eight on the play. But on third and long, Stanisek delivered. Well, it was Stanisek's running ability that turned the Furman game around. You look at this guy at six feet and 185 pounds, and you say, how can he be a running threat? But he has wonderful field vision. He saw the space. Look how he sets up Merritt here, and then cuts back against Savage, knows where the end zone is, and scores the equalizer. Ten apiece with 136 left to go. And the first half of play in this game has been everything everyone thought it would be. Stanisek on the season. You look at his statistics. He's rushed for 110 yards, a 6.1 average. First time that Carolina has scored on the ground in the last five years against NC State. And it comes from the quarterback. 
So we're tied up as Ben Crosland gets set to kick it away for North Carolina. North Carolina State has Reggie Lawrence and Anthony Barber deep. There's Barber. Barber's been ready to shake loose today on offense. Crosland getting set. This is a short kick. Barber under it at the 19. Barber upfield, good coverage to Ray Jacobs, flattens it at the 27. Maybe the 28, a nine-yard gain, and that's where North Carolina State will take over with two timeouts for me. One other comment on that Carolina equalizing score, Steve. Keep in mind that the previous play, Jason Stanisek made a bad play, threw a bad pitch, nearly lost the football, still had the confidence in himself to make a big play happen. That's what Terry Jordan has to do for the Wolfpack now. By and large, Jordan has been making them today. Perfect through the air, first and ten to throw again. Over the middle, complete. This time, Aubrey Shaw. The 33-yard line. The gain of five. Rick Steinbacher there to tackle him. Wolfpack will work without a huddle. They only have two timeouts remaining, so they have to be much more efficient with their time. And you see the time clicking away in the corner. Jordan. It is complete. What a pass to Eddie Goins. At the 48-yard line, Gracie Walker on the tackle, a 16-yard gain. Stops the clock to move the chain. As I said with Stanisek, it's the same with Jordan. Confidence is everything when you're throwing the ball. Well, he has not misfired today. That's the third one he has thrown into good coverage and gotten the completion. Back to throw again. Stanisek over the middle. Maynard complete, and he is hit by Tommy Thigpen. Gain of about three. Maynard paid for that one, for one of the hardest hitters in the league. Well, you're hoping to catch the defense flying back and you get the little swing pass underneath for good yardage and maybe get out of bounds without having to stop the clock. Tommy Thigpen stopped somebody's clock, but it wasn't the one on the scoreboard. <laughs> NC State has to call their second timeout. They have one remaining, and we have 45 seconds left in this first half of play. An exciting first half. Methodical in the first quarter, turned on big plays in the second quarter. As the North Carolina State offense gathers around Dick Sheridan, his seventh year at NC State. This is his fourth journey to Chapel Hill, where he's never lost in this rivalry. He is 5 and 1 overall. For North Carolina State, they already have suffered a loss in conference to Florida State. North Carolina unblemished in conference play with a lone win over Wake Forest. Now Steve Vinitich has kicked a 46-yard field goal this year. He did that against Iowa, their first game of the year. So that would mean they would have to gain about 20 more yards to get into Vinitich's range. He kicked a 41-yarder easily against Florida State a week ago. Second down and six. Steps out of the pocket. Throws the ball complete to Aubrey Shaw, who gets out of bounds at the 31-yard line to stop the clock with 35 seconds after a 17-yard game. And what a break for NC State that Aubrey picked his knee up just before he caught that ball, or he would have been down right there, and the clock would not have stopped. It's to the 31 from here, it's a 48-yard boot. They need a couple more yards. Now they'd like to get six. Jordan is hurried, throws incomplete to stop the clock to going. Well, Eddie saw Bernardo Harris and Ray Jacobs in his vision. Kurt Brown putting the pressure on from the outside against Randy Jordan. And when I say the outside, it's definitely the outside because Kurt's going around 330-pound George Hegeman. It's like turning the corner on a city block. <laughs> you got to leave the county to get around. Second down, 10. Ball at the 31 of North Carolina. Jordan. Incomplete intended for Goins. Walker and Thomas Smith cover. That stops the clock with 26 seconds left. Now, see, they make a catch like that, and now all of a sudden you can really think about going for six points. 
They had Goins open up the middle. Tommy Smith made the pop on him after the ball went off the hand of the veteran receiver. Veteran as a sophomore, if you will. Score tied at 10. 26 seconds to play, third and 10 for North Carolina State in the first half. Jordan over the middle, it is complete to Goins. Goins working his way to the 24. Harris with the tackle. North Carolina State has to call time in order to get their kicking unit on with 14 seconds remaining. Terry Jordan knew here the one thing he could not allow was a sack to take them out of field goal range. While he wants to go deep, he knows as the pressure starts to come and he sees the pressure coming right up the middle, I'm going to throw to my underneath guy, get the yardage I can get, and kick the field goal. I just couldn't allow myself to get sacked on the play. Good judgment by the senior quarterback. That'll bring the field goal unit on as we look at what happens next week. Bill Lewis coaching the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They're off to a rocky start. They'll host the North Carolina State Wolfpack from any of these same stations. And you'll see it at 12 noon. The two provided high drama in Raleigh a year ago. Dick Sheridan making the decision will send the field goal unit on. Steve Vittetich will step to the field in an attempt for his fifth field goal of the season. He's perfect on the day. His longest boot of the season has been 46 yards. He hit a 41-yarder a week ago against Florida State. So two of his five field goals, two of his four field goals, have been 40-plus. So Patrick the holder on the right hand. Now they say 42. Will it make it? No. It had the distance, but it was wide to the left. And the North Carolina defense has held with eight seconds remaining in the first half. NC State will get the ball to start the second half because they deferred on the opening kickoff. So although they come up empty here, they know that they have not been stopped all that often offensively here in the first half. Jason Stanisek, will he just hand the ball off or will they try a home run ball with a nothing to lose, eight ticks remaining on the clock? Stanisek staying on the ground with Mike Falkerson. And Falkerson stretches out to the 40-yard line for a 15-yard gain. But the clock will stop with three seconds remaining, and North Carolina will get another play. Now, I, if I was Carolina, I'd use your timeout. you got three of them left here, but they aren't going to, and they'll just let the last three seconds run down. And they do and head to the locker room. A hard-fought first half of play between North Carolina and North Carolina State. The scoreboard reflects it. The stats will reflect it. Their play of the quarterbacks has been crucial. Stanisek performing in the clutch situation. And let's go to the sidelines where Mike Hogwood has North Carolina coach Mac Brown. First of all, Mac, what poise by your young quarterback on that run. That was just a fantastic. Mike, it really is. Jason's played well in the first half. We've uh, stopped ourselves a few times with a couple of penalties, which we can't do. We forced to turn over them, but we've got to play better offensively and try to stop them. State's done a good job with their offensive package. Big thing you feel your team needs to do in the second half. Well, the thing we've got to do is play better defense. Stop them, not give them the big play like they had on the crossing route across the field, but we need to be more consistent and not turn the ball over and stay on the field offensively. All right, that's Mac Brown, head coach of the North Carolina Tar Heels. We've got a 10-10 tie here at Keenan Stadium at Chapel Hill. We'll be back with our halftime activities in just a moment. Watching college. Seems like we have talked about Derek Brown forever, but only the last couple of years. He and Calvin Jones make up quite a tandem for Nebraska. We've probably talked about this before, but in terms of tandems, can you think of a better eye back tandem, tailback tandem than than Jones and Derek Brown, who are truly gifted, truly great runners? The only two I can think of really think back to SMU when they had the Pony Express Dickerson. with yeah, Dickerson, Craig James. Yeah, they yeah. might be close. Yeah. Safe to say Nebraska gets great production out of Derrick Brown and Calvin Jones, both players averaging over 100 yards on the ground every game. So you can see why Nebraska leads the country in rushing yardage. Of course, a couple of weeks ago, the Cornhuskers went to Seattle to play Washington, did not fare so well. And I think the mark of a good team is how do you bounce back from adversity? Tom Osborne had to be pleased with what he saw this past Saturday in Lincoln as Nebraska hosted Arizona State. 
Coming off a hard-fought defeat to number one-ranked Washington, the Nebraska Cornhuskers return to the usual sellout throng at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. And it didn't take the Huskers long to show the home crowd that Arizona State would be the victim of payback time. McGee wants to throw on first down. It's batted up in the air and intercepted. Picked off by number 32, Ed Stewart, the linebacker. And wow, what a beginning for the Cornhuskers. Stewart's interception led to Nebraska's first points, thanks to quarterback Mike Grant. Nebraska got a 37-yard field goal from Byron Bennett to make it 10 to nothing after the first quarter. Then ASU got a break. McGee open, wide open, the tight end, and he's what got a it! Catch. Brian Ryder with a tremendous catch for Arizona State. The score pulled ASU within a field goal. 10 to 7 was still 14 minutes remaining before halftime. But the Nebraska offense was unstoppable. On the ground or in the air. Tight end Gerald Armstrong has only caught two career passes at Nebraska, but both have gone for touchdowns. This one gave the Huskers a 17 to 7 advantage. Arizona State came right back, marching to the Nebraska 17. But on third down, the Husker defense came up with a big play forcing ASU to settle for a 37-yard field goal, which closed the gap to seven points with just three minutes left before intermission. Then Nebraska got a big break. Forced to punt, Mike Stiggy booms it downfield. Sun Devil return man Adam Brass can't find the handle. It set Nebraska up at the ASU nine-yard line. It took Nebraska only one play to find the end zone. Brown, who would rush for 64 yards, gave the Huskers a 24-10 lead at halftime. To start the second half, Brown turned the rushing duties over to fellow I-back Jones, who ripped the Devils apart. Jones would lead all Nebraska rushers on the day with 111 yards, the fifth career 100-yard effort for the sophomore from Omaha. Any hopes of an ASU comeback were crumbled on the next series. The fake to Bates, McGee has it, looking for the screen, and it's picked off. Picked off by Moore. Here he comes down the sidelines. Moore will score. Wow! Bruce Moore's return was the first for a Husker defensive lineman in seven years. It was also the York, Nebraska native's first career interception. Suddenly, the game was out of hand, with Nebraska prevailing 38 to 10. Arizona State did get two third-quarter touchdown runs from its fine running back, Mario Bates, who would earn 118 yards on 23 carries. The Sun Devils churned out 514 total yards against the Husker defense, but could get no closer than 38 to 24. Fullback Lance Lewis closed out the scoring with a 50-yard run in the fourth quarter. And Nebraska cruised to 3-1 on the season with a 21-point win over ASU. So Nebraska rolls by uh, 21 points, 45-24 over Arizona State. A good win for them because Arizona State has some talent on defense. You want to hear an unbelievable stat? For 177 consecutive weeks now, Nebraska has been ranked in the Associated Press Top 20 poll, which is a record, and 351 of the last 354. That's a pretty solid program. It's a lot of weeks. It's a lot of weeks. I'll tell you what, it's a good football team, and it's a team that I think still has the potential to win the Big A Conference. I know some folks in Lincoln have been down on uh, Tom Osborne and the program and the fact that they've struggled against top-ranked teams most impressive statistics and actually the most impressive uh, aspects of play have been the play of the quarterbacks. Well, always the focus, the spotlight goes on the quarterbacks, but both Terry Jordan and Jason Stanisek have made remarkable plays in the first half. And as we look at the Ford halftime stats, you can see how well the two of them have played. The 177 yards of passing for Terry Jordan. He is 13 out of 15 in the first half throwing the football for NC State. And of course, Stanisek with the great touchdown run. And look at the time of possession. Oh, about a two-minute advantage for NC State. But pretty close and pretty error-free. Here's the scoring summary. North Carolina up top first. A 28-yard field goal by Tripp Pignetti. 
Nine fifty eight in the first quarter. State would answer that on Steve Vitatich's 17 yard kick. Those represent just two possessions in the first quarter of play. But then North Carolina State would take the lead. What set them up was this pass from Terry Jordan to Ray Griffiths. Rolled to his right and then threw all the way back across the defense. Griffiths made the good catch and then got a nice block downfield by Eddie Goins that got him down close. And from there, eventually, Greg Maynard powered up and over the top just enough, despite the effort of Rondell Jones, to put the Wolfpack up 10 to 7. Well, what tied it up for North Carolina, obviously, was the play of Jason Stanisek. Stanisek operating on third and long will make this touchdown happen. After making a bad play on a second down option, he scrambles his way. Sets up the defense and then works his way through the NC State secondary, beats Sebastian Savage into the end zone. And North Carolina ties the ball game up at 10 apiece. Second half action when we come back to Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill right after this. You're welcome back to Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. 52,000 plus watching the North Carolina Tar Heels and North Carolina State go at it, all knotted up at 10 apiece. Here as we get ready to start the second half. North Carolina State, of course, deferred their option and decided to take the football in the second half. Let's go to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood, who has Wolfpack coach Dick Sheridan standing by. Okay. With Dick Sheridan now, coach, your impressions of the first half? Well, it was like I think most people anticipated a close, hard fought game. Uh, I was disappointed we didn't uh, take advantage of a couple scoring opportunities. What are you going to have to do now to beat Carolina? Well, we've got to stop them, you know, and uh, they moved the ball very well on us. And, um, you know, we, we didn't seem to have it, the ball that many possessions. And then we, we stopped ourselves with the fumble and missed a field goal and then had to settle for a field goal on the first possession. We've got to get more points out of those uh, that field position. All right, that's Dick Sheridan, head coach of the NC State Wolfpack. Back upstairs now to Stephen Jack. Thanks, Mike. Ben Croslin getting set to kick off. Reggie Lawrence and Anthony Barber. That's Lawrence. And Anthony Barber set to receive for North Carolina State will be underway here in the second half. Roslin's kick fielded by Barber at the 15. Barber hits the seam and is brought down by number 44 John Bradley after an 18 yard return and that's where North Carolina State will start first and 10. Watch Anthony Barber. Terry Jordan has been magnificent first half. 13 of 15. Well they've only punted once in this football game so far. The only other times they have failed the missed field goal and the fumble that Dick Sheridan just talked about with Mike Hogwood. First and 10 at the 33 yard line. Maynard and Barber the setback. Reverse to Goins on the pitch. Goins squares his shoulders. He gets brought down by Bernardo Harris. We have they're a gonna call. They're going to call Neil Auer for the uh, illegal block on Jonathan Perry. That'll send it back. Otherwise, in that, a well-organized play by North Carolina State. Let's go to the sidelines in Mike Hogwood. Well, you talk about gamesmanship. Right before the start of the second half, neither team wanted to beat the other guys out onto the field. They wanted to be last. Who won that battle? NC State. Only after the officials went over to the North Carolina team and said, OK, guys, let's go. Come on out on the field. But State did what they wanted. They were the last ones out here. North Carolina will have the last laugh on this play, however. Uh, there was a personal foul called as well on NC State around North Carolina. And if it was a dead ball foul, they will mark off the penalty against NC State and then mark off the penalty against North Carolina rather than have offsetting fouls. What you don't see there is Stanisek's 13 yard touchdown, of course, which tied this ball game up. If you look at Jason, sophomore out of Park Forest, Illinois. So after they do all this, Steve, it'll end up being the ball out to the 35 yard line. And it'll be a first and eight. So that's the situation after the 35. Griffiths and Lawrence are back into the NC State offensive lineup. Nicely, well, they're going to move the chains up and say first and ten. Because so, of the dead ball foul, I guess. So we're back at the 35-yard line. First and ten. Neil Hour in motion. Pitch to Barber. Barber hits the corner and Rondell Smith hits him at the 39 yard line a gain of four. 
Neil Auer crushed Bernardo Harris with a block on the corner that enabled Barber to turn the corner. Watch the left side of your screen. Number 87, Neil Auer. And that's what's left of Bernardo Harris after he got up and tried to find Barber, but Anthony was already by. There's Barber. Slow day so far. The premier marquee running backs have yet to take this game over. Second down and five. Fullback Greg Boehner trying to fight his way back, and he ran into Tommy Thigpen. Thigpen, Steinbacher, and J.R. Bolden in the middle of that defensive line. Thigpen has been in on just about every minus yardage or no yardage play today for North Carolina's defense. Well, they've had outstanding linebackers throughout the years here at North Carolina, and this guy ranks right up with the very best. I mean, he does such a good job of recognizing and stepping up. Third down and four. Score tied at 10. First possession, third quarter. Aubrey Shaw in the lineup now. Jordan running. Pass is going to be complete to Eddie Goins. First down at the 43-yard line. Again, another remarkable throw against excellent coverage by Terry Jordan. He is 14 out of 16 this afternoon, and the only ones he has not completed were actually dropped by Eddie Goins. Look at this right there, and Goins only needs the one foot in. Great camera work there, folks. 194 yards on the day for Jordan. 55 for Eddie Goins after his fourth catch. Gives him 20 on the year. First and 10. North Carolina State of the North Carolina 42. Maynard. Second win gets him down to the 36-yard line. Hard charging yards for Maynard, and he goes down in the grass with Eric Thomas. And a late flag. run high between these two. He's gonna go against Carolina. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. One of the things you worry about, and both Mac Brown and Dick Sheridan talked about that this week to us, when a game is so emotional as this series has been through the years, it's hard to keep your players under control as the game wears on. It turns a six-yard gain into a 21-yard gain down to the 21-yard line of North Carolina. First and 10. I mean, you want to whip up their emotion, their enthusiasm, because it'll make them play better. Yet at the same time, you're trying to keep it in check from getting out of control. And every time that ball pops loose, something of that sort is going to happen. Wolfpack driving. Barber in motion. Maynard. Gets crossed up. Carolina says it's a fumble. North Carolina football. Ball popped loose as Boehner went into the pile. And the Tar Heels have picked up a turnover. Bernardo Harris walks to the sideline with it. Second turnover in the scoring zone by the Wolfpack. Maynard loses the ball. It's sitting out there in the pile. And Bernardo Harris right there at the top comes away with it. Dick Sheridan saying we just cannot keep doing this in the scoring zone. North Carolina blessed with a break at their own 19-yard line. Their worst field position of the day, and they won't mind it. Here's Keen. Pursued to the sideline and knocked out by Sebastian Savage after a one-yard game. And again, the folks in the stands didn't like the extra push. Let's go down to the field, Michael. Liddell George, fullback for NC State, was not in on that last drive. Matter of fact, he won't be in for the rest of the day. He hurt his leg in the first half. It really tightened up on him at the locker room at halftime. He's got his shoulder pads off, and uh, he is out of the game. Hurts the Wolfpack. Well, we'll look at that situation, and Gary Downs, of course, was held out most of the first half as well, so the thin the ranks are getting thin for the Wolfpack. Here's Stanisek scrambling once more for a first down. Well, Santa 
Vilasek chose to go out of bounds. Dwayne Washington bearing down on him. And Dwayne made contact, but he was pulling up. You could see he just touched Stanisek. This is a good no call. Unfortunately, in front of the Carolina bench, they get all upset. You see Washington there. If that was a late hit, he could have really popped him. And North Carolina was looking for the call before he even came out of bounds. <laughs> you saw Michael Payne say, he's going to hit him, he's going to hit him. He actually warned Washington not to. Well, you can see Mac Brown demonstrating there. He said he was clearly out of bounds when the contact was made. But you could see the intent of Washington that he did, was pulling up. He was the intent of Washington that he did, was pulling up. He wasn't trying to whack him. First and 10, North Carolina at their own 37. Stanisek to throw. Complete to Means. And Means up over the 44-yard line. It'll be a gain of seven on the play. Damian Covington and David Merritt meet for the tackle. Natron Means is the home run hitter for North Carolina. You can see the Carolina offensive coaches trying to get Natron involved in this game. He's not been able to make the big play yet. You know he is capable of doing that every time he touches the football, but he has been drawing the big pack crowd all day. 12 carries, 39 yards, two receptions, 19 for me. Straight ahead, the fullback. That's going to be Falkerson in the middle. Mike Falkerson gets out to the 47, maybe the 48. Reeves on the tackle, but it's going to be good enough for the first down. North Carolina moving. Tar Heels have not had trouble moving the football this afternoon. Well, neither team has. It's been a great game to watch. We hope you're enjoying it at home. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. Stanisek, looking at the screen to DeLong, was hurried that time because Ricky Logo was in the vicinity. Well, also Carl Reeves on the play, again trying to run that little quick boot action with the tight end just de delaying and dropping out into the flat, but the quickness upfield by Carl Reeves, the defensive tackle, forced Stanisek to get rid of the ball before Greg DeLong, the tight end, had even turned. Second down and 10. Score tied at 10. Stanisek looks to Means again. Means looking for running low. Driven out. First man to hit him was Dwayne Washington. Tyler Lawrence and Damian Covington cleaned up. Again, they are really concentrating, as you would expect against Carolina, on Natron Means. He has had some success today, but they've been able to keep him from making the big play. They've not been able to find their other big play guy, Corey Holiday. Holiday has yet to catch a pass this afternoon. One attempt went off his hands. He has a 25-game streak on the line, as a matter of fact. And that's, of course, in itself is a record. Third down, Stanisek after the one-yard gain, hits Holiday. No sooner do we say it, he pulls down for the 26th consecutive game, a reception and a first down to boot, a 27-yard. Well, if one big guy won't get you there, try the other one. Excellent protection for Jason Stanisek, the deep crossing route for Corey Holiday. They ran a crossing route with the two wide receivers with Holiday, the inside guy, and that enabled him to come free, and he does remarkable things after he catches the football as well. 83 now, career catches. Stanisek back to throw on first again. Flair to Randy Jordan, and Jordan is driven out of bounds by Tyler Lawrence. Gain of maybe two, if that. NC State has taken the screen pass out of the offense of North Carolina, at least in terms of gaining effective yards. i tell you what, that cool kid there, the sophomore Jason Stanisek, says, all right, I can't do that. Let, let me see, uh, page 45. Yeah, this will work. <laughs> well, page 45 last time went to Corey Holiday. Second down and nine after the one-yard game. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field, and Stanisek will change the play. Stanisek hurries his throw to Means, and with good reason. Mike Harrison was right in his face and hit his left arm. Well, hit his right arm, hit his passing arm. He might have caught the helmet of Mike Harrison as he let this ball go. Stanisek felt that one, no doubt about it. It's going to be third down coming. 
And nine yards to go. The ball on the 26-yard line of North Carolina State. Our score is tied. Ten apiece. We have 11-24 left to go in the third quarter here in Chapel Hill. Stanisek. He's throwing again. Complete the holiday. It's not good enough, though, for the first down. Sebastian Savage on the tackle. Let's see where they give him the spot. He's going to be close, but you're right, Stevie. He's going to be just shy. State faked the blitz and went into the zone coverage, and Holiday worked underneath and came close to first down yardage. He's at the 18. He's close enough to warrant a measurement. He is good-sized, to say the least, at 200 pounds as a wide receiver. And his strength enabled him to make this a little closer because he caught it closer to the 19-yard line and fought his way forward to come within about a little longer than it appeared from the sidelines. That's almost a full yard. Holiday, by the way, is now seventh in career receptions in North Carolina, passing Eric Streeter with his 83rd and 84th reception. And he has about 23 to go to overtake Earl Winfield, who's number one at the top. Trip Pignetti is going to come into the ball game and kick this one away for a field goal attempt. Pignetti, two out of, uh, actually three out of four. His longest is 33. This is 34. Jay Boaz, the holder. High snap. There's the kick. It is good. A 35-yarder by Trip Pignetti out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And the Tar Heels take advantage of the turnover by North Carolina State. They drive down and retake the lead on a field goal of 35. 13 to 10, Tar Heels. When it's finally time to retire, where will you play around? <sighs> Make it happen with the strength and stability of Jefferson Pilot, insurance and financial services. You've driven these streets a thousand times. But tonight, there's something different. Tonight, you're using Exxon 93 Supreme gasoline for a cleaner engine, smooth acceleration, and a full 93 octane. Let the tiger set you free. Rely on Exxon Supreme. As a truck company for 90 years, we understand the value of a strong frame, a reassuring strength for towing, whether you're on road or off road. GMC Truck, the strength of experience. Another day in the trenches got you down, been kicked around, so now you're all strung out. Maybe caught in a jam and have a bad attitude. This is going to be some sort of bad dream. <laughs> Don't have a stroke. We can save you. Just get off your feet and get away from it all. Take a break, relax, refuel. Watch Prime and get relief from the everyday grind. Steve Martin along with Jack Horgan and Mike Hogwood. There's Trick Pignetti credited with the field goal that puts North Carolina in front. 13 to 10, a 35-yarder, the longest of his college career. Ben Crosland, redshirt freshman from Dallas, Texas, getting set to kick away. Anthony Barber is deep to receive that kick. 10.30, actually 10.46 left to go in the third quarter of action. North Carolina State fumbling for the second time to give the Tar Heels their opportunity. Bosler, short kick again, and Barber stepped right out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Well, that cost him 15 yards because that ball was clearly headed out of bounds and State could have had the ball at the 35. As you see, this is the largest crowd in Keenan Stadium history for a battle between two teams ranked in the top 25, according to 
the CNN USA Today poll. 53,725. This place holds 52,000. Harry Jordan, first and ten, brings the Wolfpack out on their own 20-yard line. Barber and Maynard, the setback. A pitch to Barber. It's blocked by Lawrence, and it quickly shuts down thanks to the pursuit of Rondell Jones at the 24-yard line. There's Jones. Jones has started more games than any other player on the field here for North Carolina. 30. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. Steve, we talked in this game about all the hard hitting. There's another casualty. This time it's for North Carolina. Defensive back Thomas Smith has broken his arm. He's out for the day and for a couple of weeks, as a matter of fact. What a tough loss for North Carolina. There's a, an outstanding kid who walked on from Gates, North Carolina. Jordan scrambling. Sack. Jacobs, Mock, and Morton. Morton primarily out of Kannapolis, North Carolina, credited with the sack of Terry Jordan. Good coverage downfield, good pressure again. You collapse the pocket from the middle. The pressure coming up the middle from Greg Black, and then it went right into the arms of Mike Morton. Second sack of the day for the North Carolina defense. Third down and eight. Wolfpack trailing, 13-10. Jordan the throw. Screen is complete. Going. Upfield over the 30, very close to a first down. Tell you what, the tackle by Kerry Mock knocked Eddie Goins past the yard marker to get the first down. Eric Thomas was making the hit on him, and as Mock came to help out, he actually knocked Goins forward enough to pick up the first down. So it's first and 10 for North Carolina State at 31. That's the fifth catch for the day for Eddie Goins, 63 yards. Leads all Wolfpack receivers with 21 on the year. Ray Maynard tries to get outside. Bernardo Harris, the first to hit him at the 31. No gain on the play. Bernardo Harris, the junior from right here in Chapel Hill, had 18 hits in the victory against West Point last week. Look at him shed the block and come up and make a big time stick on a 240 pound running back. I mean, Bernardo's given away 15 pounds to Maynard. 28 tackles on the year, and then you saw what he did last week, as Jack mentioned. Second down and 10 at the 31. Jordan to throw. Is in pursuit, and there's the third sack of the day at the 23 yard line. Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator for North Carolina, told me this week they needed to do two things force turnovers and pressure the quarterback. Jonathan Perry with a good upfield rush flushed Jordan out, and Kurt Brown for the second time this afternoon, the former quarterback, runs down Terry Jordan. So three sacks and two fumble recoveries, no turnovers on the part of North Carolina. That's a very significant fact. Third down and 17 on a loss of seven to the 24. North Carolina State trails the Tar Heels by three. Screen over the middle is complete to Lawrence. Lawrence breaks free for several tackles, but is brought down well short of the first down at the 32. Well, you want to talk about contact. Morton and Perry made contact there. Well, the Carolina fans are loving it here. There is some big time sticking going on. Good call here, the little delay underneath. Watch the block right there to try and get Lawrence free, but Mock and then Jonathan Perry came back to finish it off. Boy, Lawrence was lucky to hold on to that football the way he got hit. Phil Patrick there to kick it away. Jerry is back deep. Kilpatrick muscles out a line drive to the 20. Jerry swarmed over. Carlos Pruitt, the first man to hit him. It's a 46-yard punt and a six-yard return with 6.45 left in the third. North Carolina 13, North Carolina State 10. Let's pause for a word from your local state. Wouldn't it be great if your neighbor was Wally Dallenbach, the Keystone Beer Winston Cup driver? Wally, great car. Want to take a first spin, Dave? 
spin? And keep her under 170, Dave. 170? See Wally Dallenbach, or possibly his neighbor Dave, race the Keystone Beer stock car the Winston Cup Series. Well, how'd you drive, Dave? Well, she drifts a little in three. No problem. But we need to bleed the brakes. It's Wouldn't a that be there. great? Before. Tore. After. Prime. Now you can live your dream of being a big league ball player at the Texas Rangers Fantasy Camp. At Rangers Fantasy Camp, you'll work on infield and outfield drills, take batting practice, play games every day, and receive instruction from former Major League players. Plus, you'll wear your very own Rangers uniform with your name and favorite number on the back. For information on the Rangers Fantasy Camp and a week of baseball you'll never forget, call 817-273-5222. The Southwest serves up the hardest hits in Texas. Don't miss the sets and spikes as the league's top squads battle above the net. Southwest Conference Volleyball. Take it. Texas Tech takes on Texas. Wednesday at 1030 on HSE. Your favorite team. The highlights and insights. Strategy and stars. Keep up with college football as head coaches cover the game within the game. The coaches shows all season long on HAC, the best team on TV. Welcome back to our Exxon ACC game of the week. North Carolina on Trip Pignetti's 13-yard field goal, actually 35-yard field goal, leading North Carolina State 13 to 10. Tar Heels have the ball. Back in their own 27. First down, Mike Coulter straight ahead. And what could be, Jack Corgan, a very important drive for North Carolina. Next week, we'll see the Wolfpack down in Atlanta against Georgia Tech. Both teams realizing that that game very crucial in their hopes of staying alive in the ACC Conference title chase. 12 o'clock from Grant Field next Saturday. Tar Heels, second down and nine at their own 30, 28-yard line. Means and Falkerson, the setbacks. Stanisek keeps himself in battle. Knocks him down along with Daryl Beard. Elsewhere in college football this afternoon, Penn State has come back after Maryland had the early lead at Beaver Stadium. South Carolina and Kentucky, a 6-3 ball game. West Virginia, after rallying to beat Maryland, has a lead on the Hokies. Look at the points in that game. 51 points at halftime. Well, close to 500 yards total offense at last check. Third down coming up for the Tar Heels, leading 13-10. Big rushes on, and Carl Reeves. Now that's that Daryl Beard. Daryl Beard flattening Jason Stanisek at the 21. Good coverage downfield again. Stanisek had no place to go. That was an important three-and-out stand for the NC State defense. Good little loop stunt that time, and he went right around Sean Hocker. Daryl Beard, the junior out of Fairfield, Alabama. Mike Thomas back to kick it away. He's going to 60 yarder today. Turner is back to receive with Liddell George out of the lineup and not available for the rest of the day. 34 yard kick by Thomas. No return on the play and NC State has the football in excellent field position at the 43 yard line. Well that's what I was talking about the importance of the three and out. Not only did they have to give some confidence to their offense that they'd get them the ball right back but hopefully get it in good field position. They take a, a poor punt by Mike Thomas standards to get that good field position. A missed field goal and two turnovers by North Carolina State may come back to haunt the Wolfpack. Unless they can change things around on this drive. Pass is incomplete or they're going to say that Goins caught it. They're going to say that Goins caught it. Looked like he picked it up on the hop at the 46 yard line of North Carolina. Eddie Goins out of Lakeland, Florida. They run the little bootleg action again. Well, Terry Jordan blocked our vision, so I couldn't tell you any more than uh, you could, Steve. 
Wow, there were two officials, one behind and one alongside that felt he got the hands of the knee. So it's first and ten at the North Carolina 46. Hour. The pitch to Barber. Barber hits the corner nicely. Think pen chases him down inside the 25-yard line. It's a gain of 21 yards nearly. What a block by Ray Griffiths on Cliff Baskerville. Carl Torgo says the thing that scares you about Anthony Barber is he runs downhill better than anybody they've played so far. By that, Carl means that when he turns the corner, it looks like he's running down a hill because he just keeps getting faster and faster. With a good block by Griffiths, he was able to get the first down, and that's a big blow there for North Carolina. Kurt Brown, their best pass rusher, needing assistance off the field. Looking at his favoring his left knee as he goes off. He tried to tell the trainer that he was okay, but then when he tried to take his feet, you saw the result. Barber with his biggest gain on the ground of the day of 21 yards. First and 10. Wolfpack moving at the Tar Heel 25. Reverse pitch. Here's Goins. He's going to throw it. And open. It is going to be Griffiths. There's some contact from Baskerville, but no call. Well, that just pleased both sides, which means it was a good no call. Baskerville running back, and Griffiths saying the ball was going to be underthrown, tried to get back to the football, and he actually initiates the contact. But you see Baskerville turned his head for the football, so it's no face guarding on the defender and no offensive interference because he was trying to get to the football. Good play call. Griffiths had there were, had there been more time for Goins and there was more time, probably could have made that a much easier play. Good recovery though by Baskerville. Second down and ten. Pitch to Barber, short shot. Pass the move, walked out of the 21. Be a gain of about four, driven out of there by Rondell Jones, Eric Thomas, and Perry Mott. But you go back to that previous play. That, that's a play you've worked on during the week. They set it up earlier in the game with the reverse to Goins. Now you've got them thinking the reverse run again. He didn't sell it quite long enough. It allowed Baskerville to recover and at least get in the way in the end zone. Big third down play coming for North Carolina State. Trailing by a field goal, 13 to 10. Third and five at the 20 of North Carolina. Big rush is on. Sack. How did he not fumble the football? Morton made a beeline right for the throwing arm. Watch number 82 right here. Come through almost untouched. And I thought for sure he'd strip the ball somehow. Jordan able to keep a one-handed grip on that ball to save another turnover. Brings the kicking unit on and Steve Vitatich who's booted a 46-yarder this season, will be called upon for a 44-yarder out of the hold of Tim Kilpatrick. Fourth and 12. It's good. Tie ball game. As Steve Vitatich ties it up from 44 yards out. Three sacks his second half by North Carolina. Slow the Wolfpack, but it's knotted up. You're watching college football on your local Prime affiliate. Introducing the last pair of sunglasses you'll ever need. Sunblockers, the stylish, lightweight sunglasses which block harmful UV light. I really like the color it does. Cut the glare down. Clear. What would you expect to pay for these high-quality sunglasses? Oh, at least 50 bucks. You've seen similar sunglasses advertised on national television for $49.95. But now, you can get sunblockers for just $29.95. Sunblockers also come with a lifetime replacement warranty. Even if you break them or lose them, send in the loss form for a free replacement, no questions asked. For a limited time only, order one pair of sunblockers and receive a second pair of sunblockers absolutely free. That's right, order one pair of sunblockers for the incredible price of only $29.95 plus shipping and handling, and we'll give you a second pair free. Call the toll-free number on your screen now, or send check or money order to Sunblockers at the address shown. Sunblockers come with a 30-day money-back guarantee and a lifetime replacement warranty. Call the toll-free number now. 
See it all on Primetime Motorsports, NASCAR, IndyCar, NHRA, IMSA, and much, much more. Primetime Motorsports, Thursdays at 7.30 on HSE. Back in Chapel Hill, Steve Martin along with Jack Horgan and Mike Hogwood. 3.29 left to go in the third quarter. Steve Vinatich has tied this game up for North Carolina State with a 44-yard field goal. He's now kicked three field goals this season of 40 yards or more. But it's been an afternoon of attrition, Steve, and I think this final 18 and a half minutes will be who has more guys standing. State's lost several important people. Gary Downs has not come back. Lavelle George is definitely gone for the afternoon. We saw Kurt Brown of North Carolina, defensive lineman working out on the sideline. He may come back. And Thomas Smith with a broken arm is gone for Carolina. There's the kick. This is Randall Felton trying to thread his way back over the 25 to the 27 yard line. Let's go to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. Steve, the word on Kurt Brown, he sprained his ankle, came off and told the trainer, tape it off. There's no way you're going to keep me out of the NC State game. He's going back. You know, this game has uh, amazing recuperative powers on both teams. North Carolina looked like they were going to have five people clean out of this game, and all of them came back. Well, you say to yourself, I'm going to get healthy Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week, and then get ready for the Naval Academy if you're a Carolina player. First and ten, North Carolina, Stanisek at the control. Stephen Carey out to the 32. Haven't seen Mike Thomas in a quarterback at all today. It's been Jason Stanisek's game, and he has executed. A five-yard gain with Lawrence on the tackle. He has made big plays for North Carolina, and there's no reason to change the good tempo, the good rhythm that you've had going with the youngster at quarterback. Randy Jordan in a tailback on this second down play. And a set complete to Jerry. Stephen Jerry out over the 40, 45 yard line. Damian Covington on the tackle, a 13 yard gain for Jerry, the former quarterback. Well, they go to their three receivers set to the right of Stanisek, and Jerry just sort of gets lost in the crowd. You see, everybody let him go. They were worried about. Bucky Brooks and Corey Holiday and Stephen Jerry has lots of opportunity to get upfield. Look at those numbers. 15 out of 22, 156, plus he's run for a touchdown and a big first down. And a set, little player to Jordan. Tyler Lawrence is there to stuff it out and throw Jordan for a loss of three back to the 42. They keep trying to run the screen to the tailback without success this afternoon. They usually use that to set up the screen to Holiday to the three receiver set, but they have not shown that yet this afternoon. We saw them call that Holiday screen five times in the Wake Forest game. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field on second and 14. Stanisic in the pocket, complete to Bucky Brooks. And we'll mark him down at the 44-yard line, a gain of only two. Covington on the stop. Third down coming. So Stanisek, who has reached into his pocket several times on third and similar yardage. Once he came up with a touchdown, another time he ran for a first down. Well, let's see how the NC State defense deploys here. Will they come with the pressure or drop back? They've got four on the line of scrimmage. Third and 12. Score tied at 13. Stanisek over the middle, complete to Jerry. Jerry fumbles the football. Still loose, but who's got it? Ricky Turner may have picked it up, and yes, he does, at the 39-yard line of North Carolina State. First turnover of the afternoon for North Carolina, and much like the Ricky Jor or the uh, Terry Jordan turnover, Stephen Jerry was just trying to get a little extra yardage and get the first down. Tyler Lawrence nearly picked up this football. It was number 34, David Merritt, who forced the fumble as he caught the 
football with his helmet. Had Lawrence picked that ball up, he could have run with it. Mike Reed stripped him of the ball. First turnover for the Tar Heels today. Here's Jordan downfield. It is complete. First and 10 to Hinton. Another first down at the North Carolina 46-yard line. A 14-yard completion. Thomas on the tackle. I like that after a turnover. Go right for the jugular. Try and get upfield as quickly as you can. Don't allow the opponents to get back to an emotional level they had before the turnover. They're down, try and keep them down. Bach running out on the third period of play. Less than a minute to go. Delay handoff goes to Barber, and he's not going anywhere. Mike Morton and Bernardo Harris are there to snuff out the play for no game. They'll give him a yard. it will bring up second down and nine. There's Barber. He's found the going tough this week. If you look at Ben Cross, the best seat in the house. Kickers live the leisurely life. They've used their backup linebackers, Mock and Morton, a lot in this third quarter. They've rested Big Ben and Steinbach. Mock moving, 17 seconds left in the third. Second down and about time. Jordan calls his own number straight ahead. Over the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Tackle made by Troy Barnett. Time is going to run out here in the third. In fact, it has. So North Carolina State moves the ball sprightly into North Carolina territory. We've got a tie ball game on field goals in the third. 13 apiece from Chapel Hill. Jack, you look great. New clubs, new shoes, new ball. Well, it's the new me, Bill. New golf game, too. We'll see. It's showtime. Showtime. Hey! Whoa! Maybe a two iron, Bill? Yeah, a two iron. I just don't get it. Well, it's showtime, Bill. And it's not the shoes, it's not the clubs, it's not the ball. It's this latest video from Golf Digest, how to get distance and accuracy. A video? Yeah, anyone can get it, and it's free when you subscribe to Golf Digest. Huh. I'll drive your partner with this half-hour instructional video, free with a one-year subscription to Golf Digest, just 1977. Call 800-522-5333. Imagine this video and Golf Digest. Call 800-522-5333. <laughs> Top Talk Saturday delivers as Georgia comes for the conference crown, but Arkansas stands in their way. Or NC State and Georgia Tech next Saturday on HSE. It's the European soccer scene like you've never seen it before. Up close and personal, it's the Soccer International Magazine Show. Sunday morning at 9.30 on HSE. What makes the game of golf enjoyable to you? For me, it means making people who come to my course satisfied and wanting to come back again. See your PGA professional. I couldn't do the simplest things. It seemed like everything I tried to do wasn't possible. Neuromuscular disease can strike anyone. If you suspect you or your child have one of these diseases, check it out at the MDA clinic near you. Call 1-800-572-1717. Welcome back to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Fourth quarter play starting to commence. 13-13. Steve Martin along with Jack Morgan and Mike Hogwood. Third down facing the North Carolina State Wolfpack in about two. Movement across the line early. Stop the play and the flags fly. I mentioned it earlier. Dick Sheridan's seen Terry Jordan maybe get into a pattern on calling his snaps. That time he varies it. Did he draw NC State, uh, North Carolina offsides? He sure did. And turns this one into a first down. Dick saying, how about the personal foul? Austin Robbins with a little extra how do you do to Mr. Jordan when he went offsides. Because, well, I've already got the penalty. You might as well say hello. Watch this. Hey, Terry, how you doing? Take a seat, will you? <laughs> Jordan. On a feet, by the way, on that summer. First down, the third first down by penalty this half. For either team. First and ten, North Carolina State. Jordan. Straight ahead. Ball loose. North Carolina may have picked it up. Yes, it is. Troy Barnett. The walk-on now on scholarship from Jacksonville, North Carolina. Terry 
Larry Jordan and Reggie Lawrence trying to say the ball was fumbled on contact with the ground, but that's just trying to hope for it. You can see that ball is gone. And right there to fall on the football, Troy Barnett. Third fumble of the football game for NC State. Fourth turnover of the game, combining both clubs. Three wide receivers for North Carolina now. Their own 29, first and 10. Natron Means gets the ball first play. Right up over the 30-yard line. Here's Barnett. One of several players in the North Carolina scheme who have walked on and proven themselves. Another would be Thomas Smith, who unfortunately broke his arm earlier in the game today. Stanisek, who's hit 10 of his last 12 passes here in the second half. Looking at second and nine. Curtis Parker trying to get back into pass protection. Was ahead of the snap count. The left tackle for North Carolina. It's going to make it second and about 14 now. There's a dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Early in the game, we talked about penalties like this happening because of the high emotional state of the football teams. You see what we got next week coming. 12 noon, NC State and Georgia Tech from Atlanta should be a dandy. The penalty like that one right there with Curtis Parker, that's fatigue starting to set in. The concentration tougher to maintain. Second and 13, North Carolina back to their own 25-yard line. Stanisek. That felt open under, didn't see him, went to Means instead. Got to the 28-yard line. Tackled there by Dwayne Washington. Stanisek now 11 out of 13 in the second half. Dwayne Washington giving up almost 50 pounds to Nature on Means. It was one of those, I'm going to hang on to you, big guy, and I hope I get help. Gain of three, third and ten. North Carolina, North Carolina State tied in a wild one in Chapel Hill. 13 apiece. Stanisek, big rush on. Gets away from two, but he's going to be tripped up by Andreas O'Neill. Good disguise by the NC State defense. Much of the second half, when they have shown a zone look, they've stayed with the zone look without much pressure. This time, they come with the blitz. Keith Battle up the middle, flush Stanisek out of the pocket, and eventually O'Neill and Battle finish him off. Fourth sack of the day for NC State. Ricky Turner's back deep for Mike Thomas's kick, and he gets a beauty off. Fair catch called for by Turner at the 33. And a 42-yard boot not returned by North Carolina State. So the Wolfpack has the ball back at their own 33 when we come back. Score tied in the fourth. He's in Manhattan on Wednesday. Frankfurt on Thursday. Paris, Rome, and Vienna after that. He believes it's better to do business across a table than over a fax machine. This year, he'll fly more than 100,000 miles with us because he knows nobody understands him better than we do. At Delta, when we say we love to fly and it shows, this is where it shows. When you don't like it too bold and you don't like it too smooth, you'll like it like this. When you don't like it too heavy and you don't like it too light, you'll like it like this. It's the best of both brews. Bold, genuine draft. Cold filtered draft beer taste blended with the character of a malt liquor. So when you don't like it too wild and you don't like it too tame, you'll like it like this. Schlitz Malt Liquor Genuine Draft. The draft that's more than a beer. As a truck company for 90 years, we understand the value of a strong frame. A reassuring strength for towing, whether you're on road or off road. GMC Truck, the strength of experience.
just another one of those North Carolina North Carolina State matchups tied at 13 with lots of time left here in the fourth. Terry Jordan back to throw for North Carolina State throws a bullet to Eddie Goins at midfield into North Carolina territory at the 49 Eric Thomas on the tackle 18 yard pass reception that time. Our Schlitz Malt Liquor Genuine Draft game summary shows Jordan has been the center of attention today. Well now 19 of 22 and he has thrown the ball to lots of different people. Unfortunately he's also had the couple of fumbles and you can see how they have shut down Natro and Means but the Carolina defense has come up with the turnovers. First and ten North Carolina State once again in Tar Heel territory. Barber for the corner Steinbacher corrals him from behind with an excellent angle gain of one on the play of any well with the good depth that they have at linebacker we mentioned how Mac Brown rested Steinbacher and Tommy Thigpen for a significant portion of the third quarter now those guys are fresh to run sideline to sideline here in the fourth period and take away the option attack of the Wolfpack and run they will Steinbacher came in in replacement of the injured White Hollier last year. Invaluable experience. Second down and nine. Jordan has time looking for the long ball. Has Goins complete. And a flag on the play. Just a great effort by Eddie Goins against Eric Thomas. A 46-yard pass. I'm assuming the flag will be interference against Thomas. Goins adjusting to the ball right here. Yeah, that's just a great effort by Eddie Goins. We saw the spectacular catch on the defense that he made for the winning score against Maryland. That one is right up there with it. It puts NC State in business inside the five at the one. Eight catches, 136 yards for Eddie Goins today. I was thinking during that last break, Steve, about the fact that neither team had been able to launch the long ball this afternoon, and one of them was going to try it and try and convert it. NC State, the first one to do so successfully. Carl Torbish told you the one key for North Carolina's defense is avoid giving up the big play at any posture during the afternoon. Twice they have done it inside the five. The big passes to Ray Burris to set up one score. This one could set up another. Jordan going in. He's going to be very close. Neither official willing to commit to the touchdown call yet. As they wait for Jordan to get up off the five. Now he's going to be short down to the one inch line. As you know, the state people saying that. He was in the end zone. Look how close that football was. Jordan took a pretty good pop in the back as well. From our angle, it's hard to tell whether he crossed the plane of the goal line. The guys down there said he didn't. Big Ben, the man primarily responsible for causing the doubt. Second and goal from the one inch line. Jordan. times this afternoon to make sure he got in he led with the football I mean he had the football out in front of his body you can see him holding his back he took a shot to the small of his back on the first down try and when we show you a replay after the extra point try you'll see how Jordan led with the football that's a risky venture down in close Steve Vittich out of Winston-Salem North Carolina Kicks the point after it is good and North Carolina State now has their biggest lead here or they've tied their biggest lead of seven. As we head to a commercial break here you can see Terry George leading with the football making sure it got over the goal line NC State has regained the lead. Wouldn't it be great if you could afford a luxurious mansion? Friends? Of course the place needed some updates. Like a bowling alley. Good at a pool table. Naturally you'd have an open house. Food here! With beer! Carol, do something! Icy cold filtered Keystone, Keystone Light, and Keystone Dry. Bottle beer taste in a can. Now wouldn't that be great? 
Now available on basic or expanded basic cable TV. It's the sports you want to see, and it's now available on basic or expanded basic cable TV. Last July, Kelly Davis of Arlington was brutally beaten, then left to die. Thankfully, Kelly did survive, but treatment for her head injuries could top $2 million. We're hoping you can help. On Thursday night, October 29th, singer B.J. Thomas will perform two shows at Caravan of Dreams in Fort Worth. Tickets are $20, with all of that money going to pay for Kelly's care. For reserved seats, call any Rainbow Ticketmaster outlet. Kelly has dedicated her life to helping others. Now it's our chance to help her. We hope to see you on October 29th. Astros battle baseball's best from the National League. From the first pitch to the final out, these stars are on the rise. Follow the 92 Astros on HSE. Back at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill, fourth quarter, North Carolina State back on top, 20 to 13. Jimmy Ziskai getting set. down to Randall Felton at the 25. Felton to the 35 to the 36 yard line. The score by North Carolina State responsible due to the efforts of that man who's having a phenomenal game today. Terry Jordan 20 out of 22 303 yards. No touchdowns 10 of 10 in the second half at his 46 yard strike to Eddie Goins. Set up his go ahead score. You see a career high in yardage for that guy. But Jason Stanisic having a day two for the Tar Heels. Play action pass. Steps out of the pocket and has to run. Tyler Lawrence buries him at the 40 yard line. It's a gain of four. North Carolina's play calling has to get a little more expansive now. There's still a lot of time. You, you don't want to feel like you're panicked, but at the same time, you can't necessarily say, I'm going to grind it out. I'm going to run almost every first down play. Now you've got to mix it up. You've got to get a little deeper into your playbook and see what things might work for you. Keeping in mind you still have over 10 minutes to go in this one. Second down and six. Needs the setback. Pass complete to Steven Jerry. And Jerry gets a yard shy of midfield. Wayne Washington is there for the tackle. You saw Jerry wrap on the ball hard that time. He had fumbled earlier stopping the North Carolina drive. Perhaps we're sensing a little bit of a drop off emotionally on the part of the NC State defense. You take the lead and you feel like, all right, let's get into our protect mode. Well, it's a little too early to do that if you're a defense. Facing a hot quarterback like Jason Stanisek, had a 10 yard reception by Jerry to midfield. First and 10, North Carolina. Pitch to Means. Means has room. He gets close to 10 yards down to the 40 of NC State. David Merritt is there to make the tackle. That's what I mean about not panicking. Yes, you're going to get a little more expansive in your play calling, but don't forget who your big guy is. Natron Means has been shackled much of the game, but it doesn't mean that he can't crank off a long one at any time. Don't forget about number 20, and don't forget about number one, Corey Holiday. Second and one, a free play in essence. Well, a nine-yard gain by... Means. Means had to stutter and wait for the handoff, but does get the first down. Merritt is there with the tackle along with Carl Reeves. And that's another first down for North Carolina. Carolina, lucky they did not mess up that exchange between Stanisek and Means. They get the first down. Natro hobbling, and he'll come to the sidelines. Randy Jordan will take his place in the backfield. Means. Full back body, but he's a tailback and a doggone good one. First and ten. Play action, Stanisek. Complete to DeLong. His fourth catch of the day to the 35-yard line. Gain of about four. Tyler Lawrence in on the tackle. It's a play they ran so well on the opening drive of this 
of this football game in which DeLong caught three passes. That time Tyler Lawrence did not pressure the quarterback as much, so he was able to hit DeLong before he could get that far upfield. It ends up being a gain of just a couple. Second and seven. 8-12 left to go, clock running. Pass is complete to Steven Jerry. Gets down to the 32-yard line. Gain of three, Washington makes sure there's no further progress. There's Jerry, the former quarterback, as we pointed out before. He comes up a little bit gimpy as well. Hitting is there today. That element neither team had to worry about coming into this opponent for the rivalry. Well, you've got the Carolina seniors for their first win against NC State. So is their coach, Mac Brown. Third and four. North Carolina trailing by seven. Line of scrimmage, the 32 of NC State. Jordan trying to turn the corner. And he's going to be driven out short of the first down at the 30-yard line. They're going to mark him a yard shy. They needed the 29. Well, Sebastian Savage does not make the tackle, but he forced Jordan to run so wide that Randy just ran out of room before he could get upfield enough to get to the first down stake. Watch number 32 in white, Sebastian Savage. Forced the play as wide as he possibly could. And you see Jordan just doesn't have enough room. He's trying to get to that marker, but came up a yard shy. Fourth and one. Carolina trailing by a touchdown at the North Carolina State 30. Means back in the game. The lone setback gets the pitch. Gets the first down. At the 25. David Merritt on the tackle. Great block by Greg DeLong. I mean a great block. Number 85 at the bottom of your screen made the block on Tyler Lawrence. And when you need clutch yardage, you go to the man with a capital M. Natron Means gets the first, an important first down for the Tar Heels at the Wolfpack 24. Stanisek to throw, it is complete to Jerry. Dwayne Washington holds him down at the 14. Tyler Lawrence went for the interception Stanisek, like his counterpart Jordan, has been outstanding in terms of accuracy this afternoon. Watch 58. He thinks he's got an interception. Instead, Stephen Jerry has perhaps first down yardage as he drags Dwayne Washington goalward. And bringing the chains out to measure this one for Jason Stanisek, who's had an outstanding afternoon himself, 23 of 30. 201 yards, he scored a touchdown, and the Tar Heels have a first down at the Wolfpack, 14 and a half yard line. Over 500 yards of passing from the two quarterbacks without an interception. You know, we thought that with the running backs both teams had, they would be the focus of the arsenal, but the quarterbacks have drawn the focus and they've kept it all afternoon. First and 10. Lips is on. Means is through. One man to beat. He's down at the two-yard line. Wayne Washington with a tackle, a 13-yard gain. Well, the freight train decided to take a side track. I think if the Carolina tailback had stayed straight ahead here, he might have scored. He tried to set up the Stephen Jerry block and then went wide. And Dwayne Washington ankle tackled him shy of the goal line. But the Tar Heels are two yards away from making this one real interesting. And off Fulkerson. They say the ball is down at the one. Good call by the official. The ball squirted free and then went over the goal line unpossessed. You're going to have less than six minutes to go should Carolina score here. If you're Mac Brown, do you kick the extra point or do you go for two? I think they made the decision. I watched the Carolina sidelines and the assistant coach said one. Matt Manatee back to him. They're setting up for one, but emotions may change that. Falkerson gets hit. He's going to be short again. He lost yardage. Second and goal, back to the two. Merritt on the tackle, the first man through. 
40, the clock moving. Both teams in possession of all of their timeouts. North Carolina trailing by seven. Well, do you go with the play action inside and attack the corner? The lined up strong left. Stanisek to me. Covington couldn't get there in time. Needs with the seventh touchdown of the season. 28th of his career. Trip Pignetti is set to get. It is good, and we've got a tie ball game. With 5-17 left to go in the fourth quarter, Natro Means from one yard out makes it 20-20. The BBC, Turner Broadcasting and Time Life Video dare you to take a walk on the wild side with Trials of Life. The gripping, award-winning nature video series that exposes the struggle to survive through uncensored, shocking photography. Join acclaimed naturalist David Attenborough for a close encounter with raw nature. See the thrill of the hunt and the strategy of the kill, the relentless drive to continue the bloodline and the miracle of birth. Call now and receive hunting and escaping for $9.99 and see why the law of the jungle is kill or be killed. If it captures your interest, you can get other videos about every other month. Each tape explores the harsh realities of survival in the animal world. Take a walk on the wild side with Trials of Life. Call now to order hunting and escaping and find out why we call them animals. To order your Trials of Life video, call 1-800-522-5333 or send $9.99 plus $3.23 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Fall sports go full speed ahead this October on HSE. Tune in for Tough Turf Saturdays and catch perennial college powers from coast to coast along with some high-impact collisions in the SWC and the Southland Conference. We'll also set them up and knock them down with SWC Women's Volleyball and shift gears with Fast Track Thursdays. Fall sports are full speed ahead this October on HSE. Go. This game went down to the final play here at Keenan Stadium when a Damon Hartman field goal gave NC State the victory. We've got the same scenario unfolding here in 1992. It'd be a similar finish. Both offenses have moved the ball very well. The stars of this game have been the quarterbacks. Harry Jordan with a career high 303 yards. Jason Stanisek with a career high of 201 yards. Both have been superb in the second half. They've thrown 22 passes between them, or actually 24 passes between them, and only missed on two. Elsewhere around the country, Penn State beating Maryland 21 to three. They're in the third. Good game at Lexington today. Boston College looking for a great start. They have beat Michigan State. Michigan State 0 three. Roslyn to kick. Barber's under it at the 19. Addis is in there on the tackle. A flag is thrown into the pile. Back at the 36-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines. And All right, guys, let me tell you that Eric Thomas is in the game at cornerback. He's the one filling in for Thomas Smith. NC State went right at him on that last series and completed a couple of big plays to Eddie Goins. Be interesting to see if they go back at number 38 on this series. Well, as you can see there, he is coming off the field right now. The penalty against NC State. And this is part of the reason why Matt Brown went for the one-point conversion. One, he's an undefeated coach right now, and you want to ensure you stay at least that way. Then you hope your defense can stop NC State 
and give your offense good field position to try and go down and get a winning score. This series, in its 82nd renewal, the last time it's ended in a tie, 1934. First and 10, North Carolina State. At the 22. Jordan. Screen set up. Complete to the tight end, Hour. And Hour gets nice yardage, very close to the first down before he's driven out by Bracey Walker. They have Lawrence Winslow, a senior number 36 in the ball game now, instead of Thomas for the injured Thomas Smith. This is what we've been talking about with the athletic ability of Neil Hour. That was a tough catch and still able to keep his balance and get upfield. Sets up a second and very short. Nine yards on the game. 5.03 left. Maynard. Hit by Perry, hit by Thigpen, and hit short of the first down, it appears. Boy, Austin Robbins also in there to stack it up below with the linebackers up high. And you're right, it's going to be a third down play. A big third down call coming up for NC State. 4.48 left to go in the football game. And now a measurement is being called, actually an injury now on the field. David Merritt, no, it's Greg Maynard. Maynard is hurt, so Dallas Dickerson, a sophomore, former tight end, goes in at fullback. They've already lost Liddell George this afternoon, so they have to go with Dickerson as the fullback in front of Barber. But now a third down call, and NC State desperately needing to keep the drive going, or Carolina will get the ball back. Score tied at 20. Goes to Dickerson, and Dickerson has the first down. Well, to say they have a lot of faith in Dickerson coming into the game in a crucial situation is an understatement. Well, he has played a little bit here in this second half in passing situations, filling the role of Liddell George, but that's the first time he's carried the football today. First and ten. Well, an understatement, it's probably overkill of <laughs> throw. Jordan looking for Hinton. Complete! At the 41-yard line of North Carolina, Winslow is in there on the stop. 26 yards downfield to Robert Hinton, who's made a bundle of big catches. Well, football coaches are like sharks. They'll go for the weak point. And they know the weak spot right now is at quarterback for North Carolina, losing their outstanding quarterback, Thomas Smith, they are now with their third guy over there, and they're getting picked on pretty good. First and 10 at the North Carolina 41. Here's Barber. Straight ahead. Not much yardage there, about two on the tackle. It's going to be black. Great black out of Gastonia, North Carolina. Jordan and Stanisek have just been wonderful to watch. They've been methodical in their approach. An interesting aspect of both guys' play today is the fact that there was a lot of talk about Jeff Binder playing for NC State and how much Mike Thomas would play for Carolina. Neither backup has seen any time. Neil Auer. Pitches now to Barber. Wants to change direction. Turns out to be that was a mistake. Pastorville is in there on the tackle with Bernardo Harris. Gracie Walker also flying up from his strong safety position. Tried to run the option with Hour out in front, but it was a good job by Bernardo Harris to shed the block of Hour. That forced Barber to hesitate, and the pursuit was there to finish him off. Third down, the biggest third down for Terry Jordan today. Six out of 11, NC State tied with North Carolina. Third and 10. Jordan to throw, complete to Goins for another first down inside the North Carolina 20. Jones on the tackle, a 21-yard gain. Credit the poise of Terry Jordan, but also credit the time his offensive line provided against the blitz. And again, they go after Winslow. It's zone coverage this time, but underneath Rondell Jones, Eddie Goins with another reception, and they are now in field goal range. But you know they want to get a touchdown. Jordan on first down. Barber 
with a delay. Straight ahead. Takes it down close to the 10, about the 11-yard line, a gain of seven. Terry Mott and Greg Black in on the tackle. Well, this is the best of both worlds for the Wolfpack. Not only are they in scoring range now, but they have really whittled the time down on this clock. Coming up on the two-minute mark, 2.10 to play in the game. Regardless of what happens to them here, there is not going to be much time left for Carolina, if any. Harry Jordan positioning the Wolfpack for a go-ahead score. Maynard back into the ball game, straight ahead. Keep in mind that the Wolfpack has fumbled the ball three times, twice in the scoring zone, as Maynard carries down to the seven-yard line. A 150 to play now, and I'll tell you what, North Carolina almost has to think about using some of their timeouts to give them more time on offense. Both teams have a full complement remaining. Otherwise, you allow NC State to really grind away the clock here. First down. Ball at the seven. First and goal. Maynard inside the five to the two. The saving tackle is made by Michael Payne and Tommy Thigpen. North Carolina, I really think, has got to call a timeout here. To save the time on the clock. Whether you stop NC State or not here, you've got to leave something for your offense. They ran the quick trap inside against the blitz, and Maynard nearly scored. Time remaining, a minute seven. Clock moving. Hand off Maynard. Touchdown, North Carolina State. What a day for Terry Jordan. Just a masterful drive. Greg Maynard finishes it off, going up and over Tommy Thigpen. NC State, after the disheartening loss to Florida State a week ago, really dug down for some extra this afternoon against a very fine Carolina team that still has 61 seconds of time remaining. Vitatich to kick out of the hold of Tim Kilpatrick. It is good. And the lead stretches back to seven for the third time this afternoon. North Carolina State has a full touchdown lead on the Tar Heels of North Carolina with a minute and one remaining here in the fourth quarter. Greg Maynard scores for the second time this afternoon. Terry Jordan, by his own admission, did not play well in the victory against Maryland. Did not play well in the loss to Florida State last week. As I said, there was much conversation this week about Jeff Bender seeing time, maybe very early in this football game, if Terry Jordan did not step up. You want to talk about stepping up? 23 of 25 in the football game for Terry Jordan. 10 for 10 in the second half. 361 yards through the air. The only two incompletions were drop catchable balls. Terry Jordan has been near perfect throwing the ball this afternoon. His chief target has been Eddie Goins. Nine passes, 163 yards. A 26-yard aerial carried NC State to the North Carolina 21-yard line. But keep in mind the magic this afternoon of Jason Stanisek. He has found a way to move his football team. He is 23 out of 30. 15 to 17 in the second half. He'll have 61 seconds to try and drive Carolina down the field for a score and a chance, I would guess, for a victory because if they can score a touchdown, they probably will go for two. That yard work can wait. Three timeouts remaining for North Carolina. That deep. Jordan at his five. Jordan straight ahead. Brought down at the 27-yard line. A 22-yard return. The tackle made by James Walker of North Carolina State. And Jason Stanisek marches the Tar Heels back onto the field offensively. Stanisek having a career day. There's really been no quarterback controversy at Carolina over these weeks. People have accepted the two-quarterback system, but Matt Brown has gone with a hot hand today, and Stanisek has not let him down. Stanisek. Pass is complete to Felton. Felton brought down, short of the first down, up to 32. We have a flag. We oh, might have roughing the passer. If we do, it will move Carolina well upfield. 
holding on the offense. Oh, it's a holding call instead on Carolina. A costly mistake. I saw Jason Stanisek fly backwards as he released the ball under the pressure from Tyler Lawrence. But apparently somebody was hanging on to Lawrence as he put the pressure on. So the hold sends them back to the 12 yard line, 13 yard line. 51 seconds to go 87 yards. They have all three timeouts left. Loss of 13 on the play. Stanisek. Pass is complete to Jerry. He's trying to get out of bounds and does so at the 23 yard line. Gain of 10 on the play. Thirty seven seconds to play. Stephen Jerry, who has had a very fine game for Carolina, does a good job to keep his balance here and then just fights his way through Sebastian Savage to get out of bounds. Second down, 13. Stanisek to throw again over the middle. Corey Holiday still on his feet, and he's down at the 42-yard line. He has the first down. That stops the clock with 31 seconds left. They'll move the change, and now North Carolina apparently is going to call for a timeout. They've got two remaining. Now keep in mind, as Carolina moves down the field, if they can somehow get a touchdown in these final 31 seconds, you know they're going to try for two, and it's got to be a play they've worked on all the time in practice, spring ball, summer practice, and now into the regular season. That's part of your ritual during the course of the week is you work on the plays you think are going to work in a two-point situation, assuming that's what Carolina wants to do. Drama has always been a part of this North Carolina, North Carolina State Series. Two years ago, you remember, Damon Hartman it came down to his foot, and from 56 yards, he did not fail. Oh, it comes man. down to Hartman's foot. Can he hit a long one? Hang on to your hat. Here's the snap. The ball is down. The kick is up. And it's gone! Uh -huh. Wolfpack wins! Oh, my! A 56-yard field goal by Damon Hartman! Heroics of a similar sort may not be necessary for North Carolina State. The onus is on North Carolina. First and 10 at their own 41. Keith Battle moves into the neutral zone. Was he drawn? Greg DeLong moved on the right side of the Carolina offensive line. Now, a tight end can move, but he can't make a forward move like DeLong did there. So the second penalty on this final drive against Carolina, fortunately for the Heels that time, it was a dead ball foul in terms of the clock was not underway after the timeout, so they didn't lose any more precious seconds. First and 10, first and 15. Ball is stretched back now to the 37-yard line. Stanisek with three wide outs. Dumps it over the middle to Natron Means. Means headed for the sidelines, get there at the 43-yard line. That stops the clock with 24 seconds left. Tell you what, NC State is doing a good job of getting pressure on Jason Stanisek with just a four-man rush using Keith Battle, Ricky Logo, Tyler Lawrence, and John Akins. Second down, eight to go. 24 seconds left. Stanisek, hurried and set. Brought down by Big John Akins. Stops the clock with 17 seconds to go. Carolina forced to use another timeout. Again, when you can collapse the pocket up the middle, and you can see Tyler Lawrence forced Jason Stanisek up the middle, where John Akins and Keith Battle were just relentless in their pressure up the middle, and eventually stacked up that offensive line into Stanisek. Now they're not only going backwards they're running out of time fifth sack of the day for Dick Sheridan's North Carolina State defensive line gathered around Sheridan on the far sideline several of those key defensive backs who made many big plays in their careers they're being tested here and they're one short today with William Strong out of the lineup and what the sack does on that second down play Steve with only 17 seconds remaining 
they can be a little looser with their coverage. Now they might allow a completion. They may even allow enough yardage for a first down. But now you're thinking more of two things, keeping them in bounds to force them to use their final timeout and just keeping them from getting by you. Third and 15, ball on the 37. North Carolina trailing by seven. 17 seconds to play. Danisek will be hit as he throws. Tyler Lawrence. Daryl Moody, the offensive coordinator for the Carolina Tower Heels, says there's something about a Carolina game that brings out the best, unfortunately, from the Heels' perspective. And Tyler Lawrence, he's had a good game again this afternoon for the Wolfpack. Excellent game for him, for Carl Reeves. Keith Battle has had an exceptional game. He's had two of the sacks, the five that North Carolina State has had. Fourth down, could be the last play of the game for North Carolina. 11 seconds left. Stanisek floods the field, wants Felton. Intercepted by Dwayne Washington. And that'll effectively end it with five seconds left at the 18-yard line. What a wonderful football game. It has been all of that and more as two quarterbacks have put on a show. Two defenses have done outstanding jobs when asked to. That's Jimmy Kaiser, the receivers coach, next to Dick Sheridan on the side. Well, with only 11 seconds left, you really had to air it deep down the field. Felton up against Dwayne Washington, and Dwayne more like the receiver than the defensive back comes up with the play. It's a defeat for North Carolina this afternoon, but I think Mac Brown's club, although they're going to be disheartened, answered a lot of questions. Their first big test of the season, while they come up shy, they were very close to being equal to the measure of a very fine NC State team. Coaches meet at midfield as time runs out on the Tar Heels and North Carolina State for the fifth straight year and six of the last seven conquer the Tar Heels and for the fourth straight time they pull off the feet here at Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill. North Carolina State now up their record of four and one. North Carolina suffers their first conference loss. They are three and one and Mike Hogwood as a happy coach Dick Sheridan down on the field. Well, he does have a smile on his face. Boy, what a football game this was. It was a great game. It's the way a big rivalry game should be played, and both teams played hard. And I was very proud of the way we took the ball down and scored on that last possession, and then we held them on defense. Well, you know, Terry Jordan may have taken some heat this past week, and I thought had a career day today, maybe one of the best games he's ever had as an NC State quarterback. Well, he had two subpar games passing the ball. And today he threw the ball excellent. Other than the two fumbles, you know, he couldn't have played any better. But he threw the ball as probably as well as he has in any game. What do you think about this team, though, bouncing back from that loss to Florida State? Really a measure of the character of this football team to come back and play the way they did today? Well, you know, as we talked uh, yesterday, I think that's, a, uh, that's something you have to find out is how a team uh, is going to respond. And, and our team responded just like we hoped they would. All right, congratulations, Dick Sheridan, his Wolfpack winners today over the Tar Heels. Thank you very much, Mike Hogwood. You know, Jack, earlier in the week when we talked with Ted Kane, he emphasized that North Carolina State not only needed an improvement in the play of their quarterback, but in the overall execution of their passing game. Not only did Terry Jordan have a great day, but his receivers sparkled as well. Well, only two incompletions on the balls off the hands of Eddie Goins. Look at the numbers for those two guys and significantly the interception on what was really the last play of the game the only blemish in an outstanding passing display Clock shows 339. 17-14 Miami. Miami's defense has not allowed more than one touchdown in a quarter for 81 consecutive quarters. They've already allowed one earlier in this quarter to Penn State. JT Morris in the backfield. He's got the ball. I mean, I want to tell you, there's some hitting going out there. Morris is delivering some blows, and the Hurricanes are really delivering some, too. 
Good hard hitting ball game. I don't see how in the world they can play two games in a row like this. Just incredible to me. It was a sellout time last week, and here they are again. But that road record for the Hurricanes is something. 37 of their last 41, they've won on the road. Three minutes coming up to play in the game. Third down and eight. Third down conversions today. Penn State's five out of 14. Sack back. Patrick's after his pass is away. And it's too high for O.J. McDuffie. Double coverage on McDuffie. But John had to go somewhere with it, and so he went toward number 24. And that's not a bad choice. Two minutes and 49 seconds now, and Penn State's going to have to punt it. Joe's been there a few times, hasn't he? Yep. That's the winningest active coach in college football, Division I. Two national championships. In fact, these two teams have won a five of the last uh, nine. You still ought to kick it. And it goes out of bounds. So it's a 36-yard punt. The ball goes out on about the Miami 45. And there the Canes will have it with two minutes and 45 seconds to play in the game. 17-14 Miami. And those are the games that are coming up across the country. Some on pay-per-view or some of them in your area. So why don't you check it out and see what game is free and which game you can have for 8 95 It's a great time of the year, isn't it? Fall, the look, cool weather. Just absolutely love it. You know, Joe Stonecrab, the restaurant, opened down there. So in Miami, we know that the season is uh, upon us. Had some great stone crabs last week. First down and uh, Gino Toretta now checking off. Hands it away to Larry Jones. And Jones will have three, maybe four, more like three, I think. And the clock is again running. Getting down to the point now where Penn State's going to have to start spending time out to stop the clock, and they just spent one right there. Stopping it at 2 and 34 seconds. It is Miami's ball, second down and seven. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. Donnell Bennett is now the one back for the game. Toretta's pass is good to Kevin. No, it is. No, it isn't. Didn't get it. He had to turn back for it. And he couldn't do it. But he had what he wanted. He had a linebacker trying he to did. cover Kevin Williams. He sure did. These two teams, six of the last nine national championships have been won by Miami or Penn State. Toretta is now one of his last 15. And that was the reason that was pass was incomplete. It was there. It was wide open. But the lack of confidence that he has right now just, just didn't get a kick. Gets this one there for Lamar Thomas. Thomas falls ahead across the 45. So it depends on the mark. Well, what a throw that was, Keith. You got to pick up a first down. Gibbons almost picked that ball off. Timeout. Chains on. I'm not sure this is the first down. 219 to play in the game. 17 14 Miami. Just that close. <laughs> we've, had, we've had some close measurements today. I'm telling you, at least half of them have been less than the length of the ball. Thomas is going to run it out, but watch right here. Watch the linebacker as he runs out. He almost gets underneath and picks this ball off. This is third down and about six. You're trying to run the clock out. If he picks that ball off, Toretta and the confidence. He lost it on the previous play. He certainly got it back very quickly. Yeah, that number 58 out there is Reggie Gibbons, who's picked off some in his career. They run it with Larry Jones. And down at the line of scrimmage by Rich McKenzie. But as far as Miami is concerned, the clock now showing 156, and it's frozen there as Penn State has Penn one. Penn State called the timeout. They have one remaining. One left. 
Well, it's it's it seems like it's a surprise every week with this crowd. Of course, this is not over. But Bennett has run for 81 yards. Jones has run for 74 yards, and uh, that's almost more than they had total coming into the. They were averaging 82 yards a, for the team coming into the game, and they both have uh, almost that and more. Yeah. It'll be second down and ten. The ball at the uh, 44 of uh, Penn State when play resumes. And uh, November. <laughs> Crunch time is here. Clausell late getting on the field. He had been out there. Then we climb out. And he came off. And now he's back. And Bennett's the running back. And Bennett picked up a yard short of the line of scrimmage by Derek Bonner. Bonner has just been flying all over the place today. He is something special. He really is. He's not uh, doesn't have uh, a lot of the speed, but Paterno does a lot of this, changing players back and forth. We mentioned earlier that Bonner was a running back. A lot of players uh, have changed positions uh, under uh, Joe uh, Paterno's system. So you can see Penn State has burned its last time out. The thrifty car rental postgame report comes after the game, if there is time for it, before we go off to the rest of our games today. And there are some good ones. And there have been, you know, oftentimes the fifth and or sixth week of a season are upset specials. There's always one weekend, it seems, in every college football season mm -hmm. where somebody breaks the all to China. <laughs> this seems to have been that weekend. Tennessee has finally pulled out to a lead over Arkansas with a little bit of breathing room. They break the China. <laughs> a minute and 51 seconds to play in this one. No timeouts remaining now for the Nittany Lions. They didn't know a whole lot about themselves because uh, they, the feeling was that they really had not been tested in their five wins uh, prior to today. Three points. Uh, anything is possible still with 151 to play. Penn State can get the ball back if they stop this uh, this play. Third and 11, they will get the ball back, but not with a lot of time. Be interesting to see what the Hurricanes go with. I think they've got to throw it. Don't you? I think if they throw it, they're going to throw it long down the sideline. Throwing the ball, Keith, is if you don't hit it, it stops the clock. Right. And if they would have run it, they could have gotten 25 seconds off the clock. I believe, uh, Bob, if I were a football coach, I would never, ever throw a ball like that across the field. Well, you got to have a lot. You don't do that with a redshirt freshman or a redshirt sophomore. You do that with a fifth-year senior that's one of the uh, best players in the country that you have so. confidence in. It's too easy to pick that thing off. Lions are up, they're going for it. Ten of them up there, but Snyder gets it out. McDuffie feels it back up to 11. One man missed him, and the third man gets him. And so with 1.38 to play, no timeouts remaining. A penalty flag is thrown across the way. I think we saw a yellow fly in the melee on the sidelines. Toretta today, 11 of 31 for 81 yards. Penn State's going to have a minute and 38 seconds, and all they need is a field goal to tie. Dead ball, personal foul, and it's against Penn State. Oh, my goodness. That's going to back them up. They're on a, inside the, they'll be half the distance to the goal line, so it'll be back around the 10 yard line. Oh, dear. That whittles away their chances even more. It'll also be first and 20 because it's a dead ball foul. This is the same situation that Miami defense was in last week. They were on the field at the end of the game against Florida State with a three-point cushion. I think the offense better pick up the tab for the dinner at the end of the season. Don't you? The hurricane offense. Yes. Uh -huh. The defense is bailing them out. That's right. Passes away underneath. Anderson has it. And Rich is thrown out of bounds. Short of 20. Put it on the 18-yard line. A minute and 
33 seconds to play in the game. 17-14 Miami. They have no timeouts to work with now. Remember that. So virtually everything has to go to the sideline. Or if they make a first down, obviously, the, the clock does clock. stop for, for change. That pass is caught by uh, Troy Drayton, and uh, he backs out of bounds at about the 20. Not a good play, though, Keith. They no. gained only three or four yards. Two yards. He didn't want to throw the ball there. A lot of people get upset by saying, why throw that pass there? He was looking downfield to throw it on a square in or something deeper, but with all the defenders back deep, you got to come off and dump it off to the short guy, hopefully, hopefully, hoping that he'll catch the ball and run up field with it. Ball is just short of the 20. Third down. And nine. Now they got a little pressure on him. Penalty flag is thrown. Pass is complete for the first down. But I bet you you got a holding call coming up. Back there around where the quarterback was. Yep. Pretty clear holding. So that will back them up again. They had their first down. Yes, they did. But penalties, the, uh, penalties have been getting to Penn State today rather yep. than to the Hurricanes. Right. Malinowski is trying to protect his quarterback and in the process is uh, got his arms outside the frame and there he is holding. Saka makes a nice move to slide around in the pocket. That was big Warren Sapp playing in relief of Mark Caesar too that forced that call. Uh huh. That's point of the foul, plus half the distance. So that puts the ball back on the four-yard line, where it is third down and 25. A minute and 15. The clock is now running. Out of the end zone. Saka gets it off. It's intercepted. Picked off by Paul White. White's taken down by Rich Anderson. And uh, Miami owns the football with a minute and four seconds to play at the Penn State 27 yard line. And I'll go back to what I said at the beginning of the day. Let's bronze them and put them on the show. <laughs> Somehow, is, some way, they always seem to find a way to win. It is one of the remarkable things that I've seen. And I did my first college football game, I guess, back as far as 1952 on radio. And I've never seen a team play two tougher games than Miami has in these past two weeks. Florida State last week and Penn State this week. And I'm sure that Saka's playing dinged up. John's trying not to show it, but he's had ice under that jersey on that shoulder. So he took a lick somewhere today. And uh, Toretta puts his knee on the ground to start the clock ticking. And it'll pick away the time, and uh, they'll do it again in a moment or so. You know, Keith, when Erickson came to, came to the university, uh, he, he said there, there's something that exists between the former players and the current players, uh, some unshakable bond, which is the heart of what Erickson calls the UM mystique. And, and the, the players that go on are very involved with the program. They do stay in touch with these players, and they just seem to carry it on. But I would also hasten to tell you that if Penn State is on your alma mater schedule in the future, don't get confident. Yeah. But this is a very good football team, and the test and pressure they were exposed to today will only make them better. And this one is going to end with a final score. The Miami Hurricanes, 17, and Penn State, 14. The Canes continue their win streak. It is now at 23. State has its win streak broken at 11, and uh, the last people to beat Penn State prior to today was uh, Miami. So here are the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Michael Barrow, the middle linebacker, 13 tackles for Miami. And for Penn State, Rich Anderson, 27 carries, 116 yards, and a touchdown. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for academic achievements and to help those who need some help. Now, Jack Ruth with the winning coach, Dennis Erickson. Well, Coach, congratulations, first of all, but finally it looks like we've got a ground game of sorts. Yeah, we ran the football better, and uh, we played better offensively, but defensively, of course, was a, was a key to the game, and uh, 
Penn State's a great football team. To come up here and beat him is a tremendous accomplishment after last week uh, playing Florida State. I don't think any football team can do that. You had said or were quoted in some of the papers that after this game, if you were victorious, that you'd begin to lobby for number one. Well, I'd be surprised. I mean, all you can do is watch us the last two weeks. I'm not going to lobby for anything, but this is a football team that's played their heart out the last two weeks, been through a lot of things, and for them to come up here and win is amazing to me. It's been a season of adversity for you, first with the loss of two of your former players, then Hurricane Andrew, and you guys just seem to always rise to the occasion. What is the spirit to this team? Well, they just believe in themselves and the program and all the guys that played here uh, before, the Shane Currys, the Jerome Browns, the guys that have been very special to our program. And I just want to say Penn State's got a class program, and they played really, really well, and we were fortunate to win. A three-point victory last week, another three-point victory this week against two very tough teams. Should the University of Miami Hurricanes be ranked number one come tomorrow? Well, I'm going to vote for us. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter a whit whether they're number one tomorrow or not. What matters is whether they're number one January the 2nd. All this hoop to do and yakety yak over uh, who's number one right now really doesn't mean a dead gum thing. January 2nd is when it counts. That uh, Arkansas Tennessee game, the big ball game down at the Southeastern Conference, uh, Tennessee 24, Arkansas 16. They're now in the fourth quarter. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Jack O'Hara, coordinating producer of ABC's college football, Bob Goodrich, who also produced today's game, directed by Larry Cam, our technical director, Gary Larkins, associate producer for college football, Jim Ressler, associate director, Patrick McManus. football coming up check your local listing for the game in your area and there are some big ones including Oklahoma Texas and uh, Clemson Virginia Michigan Michigan State and California Washington and here is the game that decided things this was pressure by Armstead on Saka and then Coffee fresh? Fresh brewed. Fantastic cup of coffee. So what's the secret? Arabica. Oh, <laughs> what's an Arabica? Arabica beans. Oh, the beans. And what else? It's always fresh. It just tastes good. And, and they like to come in and talk with each other and just like uh, the small coffee shop long ago. How much a coffee refill? They're free. What you want is what you get. It's guaranteed. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Fix-A-Dent Fresh. The spring water fresh feeling is reason enough to try it. And it's the strongest holding adhesive, so you'll never settle for anything less. Crisp freshness. Strongest hold. Two great reasons to fix a dent and forget it. Introducing the Goodyear Buy 3, Get the 4th Tire Free Sale. Buy three Goodyear all-season radials, and you'll get the 4th Tire free. Come on in, before they all disappear. Virginia medical staff is working frantically on Terry Kirby because of a shoulder injury. We'll see if he comes back in. At the eight-yard line, that's Washington. And another look at that Clemson touchdown. Rudy Harris has been strong. Look at the tackles Harris breaks, though. One, two tackles. Then he just outruns the secondary for a man that size. Now, there was question about whether he got in or not. Watch his feet. His foot's in. Does the ball break the plane? Watch the pylon. All right, now see the pylon on the left? Did he get in? Well, they said he did. It's on the scoreboard. And Washington is the tailback. Terry Kirby is still on the sidelines. He is not in the game, Terry. Let me follow up something that you said. You mentioned the medical staff working frantically on Terry Kirby. When it was time for the kickoff, he came bouncing off the bench and came up to the sideline like he was going to play, like he was going to come in for that first down. And all of a sudden, it looked like that shoulder popped on him. They rushed him back to the bench, and they're still working on him. Right now, Charles Way, the fullback, checks out. And Virginia sets up with Tyrone Davis, slot right. Got those shoulder pads and jersey off. 
Goodman back to pass. He puts it up for Davis. And what a grab. Complete of the 45. A 28-yard pickup and a big first down for the Cavaliers. Tyrone Davis works in between the zone. Now watch this. Gets by the cornerback. The safety hadn't come over yet. And Goodman puts it right between the two of them. Well-thrown ball. Fine catch. Tyrone Davis in three receptions for 98 yards. And two touchdowns. That's come out in the offset eye this time. Hand off is to Washington. 4.35 and ticking. Tackle that time made by Tim Jones of Clemson. 28-26, Virginia. Kirby out of the game. Shoulder pads all taped up. 4.20 still left in the game. Plenty of time. Clemson with no timeouts left. Virginia with two. So obviously the advantage right now, even without Kirby, belongs to the Cavaliers. Backs in the offset eye again. Play action by Goodman over the middle, and he had Tyrone Davis and overthrew him. He was open on the post. Boy, he was locked in man-to-man -man coverage with Jeter, and he had, beat, had Jeter beaten. He knows it, too. The Cavaliers have not scored in the second half. They led 28-0. It's now 28-26. Give the big guys some credit up front. Could be the best offensive line Virginia's ever had. They gave him great protection. Goodman, maybe the adrenaline pumping a little too much, a little too strong with the pass. They've got three wide receivers in. Big third down play here. Out of the shotgun. Goodman drills it, and he's picked off. Darnell Stevens. Clemson right now believes it's going to win this football game. 353 left, and the Tigers feel like they're in control. We'll have the finish when we come back. Excuse me, you're the owner of this place? Yeah, I'm one of them. So you could buy any laser printer you wanted, huh? Well, we bought an HP laser jet printer. But you could have bought any laser printer. Yeah. Why? Ah, just for the novelty of it? I got enough novelty around here. But isn't buying an HP laser jet sort of like a, no, no brainer? Nah, I think it's kind of like a brainer. HP laser jet printers. If it isn't a laser jet, it's only a laser printer. Today, a woman needs a life insurance plan of her own. State Farm sells life insurance from an agent who's there for you today and there tomorrow, too. You see, we start you outright with a plan specifically designed for a woman's needs. One that protects the people who count on you for so very much. And the State Farm agent will be there tomorrow, too, as your life changes, to keep that plan working for the people you love. State Farm sells life insurance. Yeah, I looked at the BMW and the Lexus. And? I drove this. The power, the handling, the control. It was incredible. Really? It's got leather, ABS, dual airbags. It's even supercharged. I could have spent a lot more on the BMW or the Lexus. But why? What is this? The new Pontiac SSEI. We are driving. Very nice. Excitement. Pontiac. It was third down and seven. Clemson goes to a nickel package. Darnell Stevens, number 30, right there to the left of your screen. They hit him like a linebacker. They drop back in zone coverage, and Goodman throws into the coverage. Bad decision, bad throw. Clemson has the football. Darnell must have heard me when he said when I said he wasn't the same player he was last year. The fullback, Rudy Harris, pounds it out for a couple of yards. Darnell Stevens last year was a terror on special teams. He returned some punts very well last year in the same game against Virginia, a game that was played in Clemson, South Carolina. Well, Stevens was a starter at cornerback in 91. That's when he hurt his knee and missed some time. His homeboys call him D-Nell. 
the pitch to Rodney Blunt. And Blunt is pushed out of bounds about two yards short of the first down by Mike Wardlaw. Look at Chris Slade. He was chasing him out of Scott Stadium. I think Solomon could feel him breathing down his neck. That's when he pitched it. Again, we tell you, Clemson has never made up a 28-point deficit to gain a victory in this stadium in the history of the school. The largest come from behind victory by Clemson was 18 points. And Ken Hatfield has pressed the right button here in the second half. 317 yards of offense. Third down and two. The toss and the first down. Rodney Blunt got the first down. That was impressive, too. They got the pitch to Blunt, and as soon as he secured the football, rather than heading to the corner, he turned direction and went straight for that first down marker. 15 rushes for Blunt, 140 yards. How about that? We said the two top rushing teams, also the two top rush defenses, the rushing teams win. What's that? <laughs> Split backs, and now they shift back into the eye. Terry Smith is split wide. And they go downfield to Wyatt. Ryan's wide open. He catches it at the nine-yard line. Larry Ryan's the speedster with a big catch for Clemson. 46-yard gain. You said definitely a speed guy. He is that. The first All-American in Clemson track. Ten-time All-American. 110 meters to 55 meters. He's gone from the secondary to tailback, and watch this. Zone coverage, he splits the zone with his speed, gets by the secondary before they can adjust at all. How do you get behind the secondary in a zone coverage? Lewis Solomon, Tim, put that one right on the money. All he has to do is throw it as far as he can and hope the guy will get there. Ball handling now key. Rodney Blunt on the toss, gets to the corner. And a flag down in the backfield, and this one could come back. Tell you what it is, it's going to be holding Slade. Unnecessary, too, Tim, because that was away from the play. Since Slade got to this school, the Virginia coaches have pleaded with officials saying that they hold Slade all the time. He's that good, so they're holding him. And it never gets called. This time they threw the flag immediately. Well, it is definitely against Clemson. And here's another look at it. They changed Slade to the left side this time. And look at the hole right there. There's no question about it. Slade's screaming for it, and he gets it. They were all over Slade like a hungry man on a Big Mac. Hey, give Slade a lot of credit here, because it was Slade that alerted the referee that he was being held, and that's when the flag came out. First. Interesting, too, isn't it? How Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, switched sides that time, moved Slade to where the ball was going. Look at the difference in penalty yardage. Clemson almost doubled that of Virginia. First and 23. No flags. Looks like there was some motion on the left side of the line, but no flags dropped. And the fullback takes it up to the 20. Harris. Not only the motion, but I thought Slade was in the backfield before the ball was even snapped. He's quick, but not that quick. <laughs> Although you talk to him, he says, I'm quicker than gossip. <laughs> 140 and going. And what is going through the mind of Nelson Welsh right now? As we approach 130, he missed an extra point earlier. And he missed a field goal, too. again down to the 16-yard line. Clock continues to move. You see it, 114-13 to go. Clemson now positioning to win this football game. Chris Slade made the tackle that time. And the clock stops with 107 to play. The timeout taken by Virginia. And there's the guy I was talking about just a few moments ago. Last year, came in with 46 seconds to go. We saw the tape. He tied it up. This time, he may have a chance to win it. A couple different strategies. A lot of teams, some guys don't even like to talk to the kicker before this. They're afraid they're going to make him nervous. See all the Clemson guys talking to him. Everybody's coming up. This coach is coming up. Hey, listen, everything's all right. He's trying to smile and say, hey, yeah, where are you going tonight after the game? Take the pressure off the guy. Right now, Clemson's got to be thinking, all right, we're going to run a play, and we're going to try to make it work to get the first down because there's still a minute seven left. But what we want to do if we don't get the first is at least 
position the football near the middle, in the middle of the hash marks, to give him a straightaway shot. Well, Tim, where the ball is right now, it would work out to about a 33-yard field goal, which is very much within his range. He's kicked a field goal this year of 52 yards out. Oh, he's got a strong enough leg, but how severe is the angle? The ball right now is near the right hash mark. See, all this goes to a kicker's mind. It's unbelievable that the ball actually started on this drive at about the seven-yard line for Clemson. That penalty, the hold against Slade, really cost them in terms of yardage. And due to the length of today's game, we will be unable to bring you the thrifty car rental post-game report. So you mentioned how strong his leg is, and it is. He's hit a 40, he's hit that 52-yarder. Inside 30 yards this year, he's four for four. Well, that's where they are now. Third down and 16. to the fullback again. All right, and see what they did? Play. They came over, they wanted to get closer to the middle, they tried to come to this left side. They got a yard or two back closer to the middle, but they still didn't get it perfect, but it's in a lot better position than it was for Welch. The tackle, by the way, made by, by the way, Chris Slade on that last play. All right, Welsh has to put his failures down earlier in the ballgame. Just has to completely put those out of his mind. Got to give himself a checkup from the neck up and get rid of that stinking thinking. He's got to think positively now that he's going to put this thing through. Well, this one will come from 32 yards out. This year, between 30 and 39 yards, Welsh has been fairly accurate. Well, not so much. He is 0 for 3. Well, wait a minute now. We said 4 for 4. That's inside the 30. All right, now, between 30 and 39, that's where he's 0 for 3. And then you get back out longer than that, and he's confident again. Inside the mind of a kicker, huh? You do have to be a different sort to be a place kicker. Last year, he tied it up. 